Hello, everybody. Is everything Hello. working for the sound? It should be. I, th I think we're so, good. I think, hope so. Uh, hey, welcome to uh, Table Talks with Table Scraps. Woo! Woo! Life and can hear. <laughs> Groovy. <laughs> um, well, uh, for those of you who don't know what's going on or are new here, hi. I'm Aaron. I'm joined by my lovely guests, Lydia and DJ, today. I don't know if I can call Lydia a guest. She's yeah, here every no. time. No, I'm, I'm but, a constant. Uh, but but DJ. I am to be a guest. Whew, yeah. Uh, if you I didn't know, so and you're new, uh, DJ is our DM in the main campaign. Um, he's great. Uh, a so good friend. <laughs> Speaking of the main campaign. That might uh, be the nicest thing Aaron's ever said to me on stream. Uh, don't worry, I'll change that soon. Um, uh, speaking of main campaign, we stream that on Mondays at 7 p.m. So if, if you don't know about it, be there. It's fun. Other campaigns that we do, uh, currently our season finale of, of our little, uh, like, side campaign for October streams next Wednesday. It's a special finale. Four hours long. It's the, like, horror thing. I DM it. It's really fun. Absolutely nothing bad ever happens in it. It's great. No, it's all good. Uh, and of course, if you're here, uh, table scraps, unless we have to like do something else on a Thursday, will take place like Thursday afternoons, um, which is kind of where we are right now. So I'm going to start off with the question that I always start off with, and uh, y'all should be prepared for it. Last episode of the main campaign, Monday night, things happened i want your thoughts i want in-depth <laughs> thoughts i want them to be oh uh, shh, shh, don't don't tell anyone but yes dj lost the stash thank god ned flanders has left us no i'm so sad <laughs> i miss I'm it he's the just a he's a clean me. he's a clean baby boy today uh but yeah lots I of stuff happened uh, lots of stuff in the last episode whole bunch yep uh, uh i do want to prep I am I'm sick right now. I have a nasty cold, so I apologize. I got my tissues over here. I'm drinking orange juice. I got my vitamin C, but I apologize if I'm like coughing or just sniffling. It's like, no excuse. It's not okay. Deal with me, so. No. Heck you. We're kicking you off. This is gone forever. <laughs> You're um, I, special, th say goodbye to our special guest. He won't be joining us anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll start off start off with because uh, DJ's new here. Um, Lydia, thoughts on the last episode? Uh, like, do do you plan to do like is what what's 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 Renaya what's Renaya going through? What's she thinking? What's 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 going on here? <coughs> a whole bunch, I know. Uh, there's some there's a few things mm -hmm. there, there's a few there's a few things going on. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a, a few. There's a, there's a few. Do you want to elaborate on any of them, or no? It's fine if you if you can't because they're like secretive stuff. I think, I think I want I want DJ to go first on his thoughts. Oh man! I'm actually really interested in DJ's Throwing thoughts. Throwing him under the and bus. And then and then I'll input I'll input. Well, do you, somebody I can, else. I can talk. Okay. Okay. First off, uh, for anyone who isn't. <laughs> around the like main campaign i should preface um two of our members are having to take like an extended leave of absence for an undefined amount of time um and so their characters have either have been dead killed as far as we know um in the main campaign and, and those that oh, happened in the past gone. like t gone forever it's confirmation from the I dm <laughs> absolutely um <laughs> So they're super dead. So that happened in the last episode and the episode before it. Um, so our characters are having to deal with that. And while well, DJ laughs in the in the background. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. So so DJ, give it give us some input. What 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 is well, going on here? <laughs> well, there's a couple things. So it it was very interesting because I knew that the last episode was gonna be pretty rough on the party especially coming off of the previous episode before that um especially with cather i knew cather was going to be 
having probably the worst time of the yeah. year. Renaya's Favorite by Drew. Whew. visceral reaction to everything happening, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and so her and I have talked a little bit about it since then, and, and it's it's very fair. And I'm, I'm very interested to see where she decides to continue with this kind of little thing that's going on. She already caught on to some secret stuff that she wasn't supposed to figure out so okay so i i think i know the secret stuff that she wasn't i'm not gonna say it but uh she told you too well i don't know uh it so my my brain's also going um the think tank is always going yeah the think tank is aggressive and and i'm not sure if it's the same thing but um uh See, so my, my question is, if it is the same thing, was this planned from the beginning? I don't know what you're thinking. Well, so so the, so the thing is, and it, it may be two different... I don't want to reveal it. I don't want to reveal it if it's don't the same thing. Don't say it. Thing, Whatever that's you think really it is, scummy. don't say it. But Aaron, there is a... Text it to me, and I will... Oh, shoot. Because it, I know that, that Lydia at some point in time mentioned a thing to me as like an offhanded comment. That I then proceeded to extrapolate and then just run wild with. Um, but, but ah, okay, okay. Uh, you D Day stall for time. I, I can do that. Also, oh. I don't know how to spell it, so just sound it out, and you'll know what I mean. Okay, sounds great. I mean, I I have mentioned. So this is great. This is where I'm going to take this. Uh, I always love when my party tries to spell out the things that I make up because I am the laziest <laughs> when it comes to the English language. And I've mentioned many times that if you just spell something you know, phonetically, like that is most likely how I spelled it. Let's see. Unless I'm an idiot and I can't sound out something phonetically, then I'll go something different. Or unless I like, I use name generators Gosh. a lot because I'm really uncreative. Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of name generators. This last episode had so many. <laughs> We had Iraq Varas, we had Vastrusium, we oh, had man. Macau, we had, um, we had Zastari. Um, well, Iraq Varas has been around for a while. I, that was created a long time ago. Um, and I was actually really impressed with Aaron when he asked me about Vastrusium because Aaron and I, when we were building some of the lore for the orcs and for the Alistar dwarves, we came up with Vistrusia and then, like, never talked about it again. And this was stuff that we were coming up with, you know, back before the campaign started, like a year and a half ago. So when you were mm. just like, yo, dog, is this this random material or does this remind me of this? I was like, wow. I, oh. Aaron never ceases to impress me. Uh, so, okay, I'm going to reveal my secret on this one. Don't be too impressed. Aaron had 14 tabs open to different <laughs> documents that, so I don't take notes on, like, I don't take notes while we play. I'm really bad at that. Instead, I just have notes that cover, like, like, I'll just sit down and write a note for, like, no specific reason, and they're never connected. So I have to have every single note that I've ever taken put up on the same screen, so I just have to, like, every, you'll see, like, someone will mention a thing, and I'll just go... And just like click <laughs> along the links on the top of my screen to be like try to find it. Aaron well, is truly a student. I also love like NPC names because they're either like so ridiculous, like you can't even imagine how to spell it. Oh yeah. Or it's like damn. They're the most plain. Yeah, like literally, my I have a list of names in my notes. So, like I keep track of the people we meet, and just my beginning, I've got Callaway from my one shot, Samuel, Jonathan. Filet, Susie, <laughs> Melancina, so, Anton Romando, Jericho Anton Savant. Romando. <laughs> so, Aaron, to answer your question. Uh, is, is it the same thing that, yeah, that Lydia? Same thing. Oh, 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 yeah. To answer your, to answer your second question. You supposed to think about no, it. No, it was not the original plan from the beginning of the campaign. Way to, way to adapt, though, DJ. Good work. Well, Gratz was never a part of the original campaign. Nice. Uh, and so all of this stuff that's happened because of Gratz has really just, it's like I have the door that is the main campaign, but then we like took the trim around the door 
and we added like really fancy like filigree and all these nice ornate decorations around the door. The decorations are grass. It's really great. You guys well, are still I'm on the main campaign. It. I'm glad just makes it better. I'm glad you see it as that because I've I've actually been a little nervous about. It. I was like, I really hope I'm not derailing his stuff with Grotz. No, you're not. And derailing. like going you after Grotz. You stuff. can't derail my campaign. I had Aaron Cleverad as a DM. He taught me how to railroad without you guys knowing that I'm railroading. <laughs> so, I I would like to state um, uh, this is this is going back to when we mentioned previously about like names of things. I think that you are absolutely in the right to have these names that are like super long and complicated, and then have like a dude named Dan, because like <laughs> I'll I'll refer to the Dune series. Uh, they the movie came out. Haven't watched it yet. Really interested in it. I love the Dune books. I've only read the very first like chronologically, and it was crazy, and I just couldn't get through the rest of them because I was like these books sucks. But the movies are great. I thought there was only one book. Oh, no. Oh, no, there is a lot of Dune books. But, like, wow. you, you end up with names in Dune that are, like, Abulud Halkonen, like, Fade Rautha, Chief Handler, and then Paul. Mm -hmm. Like, or, like, or Duncan Idaho, which, how can you get it? <laughs> like, that's an <laughs> actual Idaho. person's name. He's played by Jason Momoa. He's in yeah, movie. and he's great. He's great. But it's like, um. <laughs> it's like, yes, my name is Shaddam Karino the Fourth, and my name well, is David. Well, there's <laughs> there's the hack right there. You know who the important people are, based yep. off at least in my campaign, based off of how complicated their name is. Yep, it's, it's like, like oh, oh, this is some Phil. random throwaway that's character. A, that's Hi, a my name's Phil. NPC that you guys were not supposed to meet or do anything with. Yep. I try and if I know that you guys are gonna go to a place like if like if I know you guys are going to a new tavern or something like that, I'll try and come up with the uh, the name of the tavern and the the innkeeper, and the innkeeper, yeah. But most of the time, if you guys are just like, oh, we decided to go to this random place, yeah, I go well, just pick out a random fly, person like, out of the crowd. Looking up name generators, or it's like whatever first name comes to my head. What are you laughing at, Lydia? What are you cackling about? You've asked um, about the names, if I had little descriptions for them, and I do, and I was reading through some of them to find some good ones. So there's Samuel, redheaded orphan gnome I got emotionally attached to. Um, there's He's dead now. Anton Romando, <laughs> works at 12 Platinum Cranes, part of Havel's Mafia. Uh, Jericho awesome. Savant, works at Sunrise Suite, part of Havel's Mafia. Um, awesome. uh, <laughs> Terracolla Mose, Gold Dragon, Lada's Lover, know him apparently. <laughs> nice. That is another thing that I, I, I have mentioned the last couple of times to a couple of different people. So, a little, little behind the scenes with Terracolla Mose. Renaya never actually met Terracolla Mose. So it was the funniest thing to me when we, like, we got to Lada's place, we got to... Um, Katin and and Lada revealed that Terracolamos was her lover and partner and all this type of stuff. And then everyone just started like treating Renaya like she had connections and like he was like her stepdad. And it's, like, it's great. Oh, she has and claimed the horde. She has she knows these people. And it was like, no, that's not the case. Well, like and and DJ didn't tell me about Terracolamos, so I had no idea who it was, but then everybody like immediately assumed that Renaya knew him. And I'm like, wait, am I supposed <laughs> so I kind of went with it, but I'm always like, eh. Like, so, we, I didn't know him that well. <laughs> it's so good because, because like, it, it was, I could yeah. see the confusion on Renaya's eyes, but I'm like, this is too good to not go with. Like, that's <laughs> not an opportunity for me to just be like, oh, well, she doesn't know, so I don't have to talk about it. No, 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 no. Let, let's be clear here. Your, your adoptive mom dated God, and you didn't know about it, but that means that I can say that God is your is your adoptive stepdad. Just because you didn't know about him doesn't mean that it's not the case. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to declare this as fact. Also, no, you are correct. Uh, a good DM does have two plans. Uh, a better DM improvising the fly. I will raise you one even higher. The best of DM has one plan that he just makes work. <laughs> you, you, you jam him into it. <laughs> Right. You're like, eh, it right. welcome, like, oh, welcome. I would to, like to do this. Yeah. No, anyway. <laughs> welcome to Between the Rows. It's like, oh, you wanted to do something else? Yeah, exactly. Mm. 
<laughs> it was my favorite. It was like episode, what, episode two or something? You guys were like, could we just like fast track this? Like, could we just leave? And I was like, I mean, you could, but I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and, and the thing about it is when you play with the group long enough, they begin to learn the DMs like natural cues. Yeah. And they'll learn how serious you are about that. So like I played with Aaron for seven years. If Aaron says I wouldn't advise it, I'm not gonna do it because Aaron will kill my character without a second thought. So I, I, this is a this is a really exactly interesting thing. I, we actually uh, Lydia was there for this. I had, a, I had a wonderful conversation with Drew. Um, I have a lot of conversations with Drew. Basically, if Drew and I talk, it's complete silence for like three hours, and then one person will make an offhanded comment about an opinion in like an RPG, and then for the next five hours. It'll be us like debating two different topics that has no end goal, um, and and we will never resolve it. And but the thing is, like we realized, I was like Drew, if either one of us was playing in the other person's campaign, we wouldn't have this debate. Like it would just be like, no, this thing happens, and we would go, oh okay. <laughs> um, and so, so true. it's it's great because eventually you you play with people long enough and you know them well enough that like, um. I, I talk a lot about hooks, like DM hooks, where mm -hmm. I agree 100% with, like, ad-libbing and, like, coming up with that stuff on the fly is really great and all, but a, a story is best told when the players and the DM work together. So, like, if you're a player, a good player will notice hooks and, like, they'll pick the one that they like. Yeah. Um, a good DM provides hooks that their players will like. It, it becomes a real big problem if your if your DM is giving things that they will like and you don't, or if they're giving things that you like but you're like, no, I don't want any of those. I'm going to do my own thing. Because um, it can just cause a lot of discourse. And, and in a lot of the games that I've played, that's how a lot of them like derail in like bad yeah. ways, um, where yeah. it's not like communicative. Yeah, and to further like prove your point, one of my best, most recent examples will be in the last episode talking about uh, Veras because, again, Aaron didn't know that this weapon existed. Like, mm -hmm. he knew of Vestrusium, he knew of, you know, Al the Alistair Dwarves, he knows of uh, Durith Dular, a lot of these kind of lore facts. Yeah, I had no but, idea a weapon had already been made, or if it had, had that it, no... like, had a history. Exactly. So when I'm like, hey, this is what you know about this, and Aaron goes, oh my gosh, this is like the god killer weapon, and just like took it and ran with it, that's such a good example of the DM and the player just running with things. Oh yeah. And I think that's that's a really good thing for DMs as well, is to not be so in need of control that you can't hand something to the player, let them do whatever they're going to do with it, and then bounce off of that. Oh well. yeah. 100% agree with you. Um, you know, uh, track, track has a lot of... Uh... That that has changed Tarak's perspective on a lot of things, and part of it, yeah, is is me going, like, this is the part. Sometimes I talk about like good metagaming because regardless of what you do, you're going to end up metagaming sometimes. Like just because mm -hmm. you as a person know yeah. things, oh. um, and so there's a difference between good metagaming, where bad metagaming is using your outside knowledge to gain an unfair advantage or to negatively affect things in your benefit. Good metagaming yeah. is using the things that you know to better enhance the story without changing the decisions your character would make. So, like, I knew it's, it's like, uh, Drew had a dream that involved this hammer. I know this. My character obviously doesn't. He's he's not like a dream walker. Um, but I know that this I know that this hammer is important because it was in Drew's dream. So simple solution. Don't just throw it away because I'm, I'm like, yeah, it's just a hammer. No, 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 this is like a focal point of the story. It's bound to be important, so add importance to it. And yeah, tracks tracks this in a situation been now. Such a... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you care to elaborate on that? Well, I, I'm I'm down <laughs> to like an extent. So like, if you watch the episode, which I advise, it's on YouTube podcast. If you can't watch it like visually. <laughs> Um, we also have it on, on YouTube and, and Twitch stuff. It's, it's really great. You should, you should watch it. It's really good. Um, Podbean, uh, Spotify, you know. It's all those things. Um, yeah, just 
you're there and 100%. Uh, also, check out our we YouTube have a shorts. We have our <laughs> yep, yep. Um, <laughs> but uh, Track was pretty, like, he wasn't pumped about, like, members of the party dying. Like, he's not excited about that. He's not like, yes! Yes, they're dead! Finally! We got rid of them! <laughs> yes! Um, but he isn't, like, weeping or furious or upset, really. It's it's very, like, down to business. Um, and a lot of it is, is me knowing there's nothing I can do right now. Uh, it's not like I can change anything, like, outside a game. Uh, and the other part yeah. is Track is confronted with a much bigger issue. Because in, in Track's mind, people die and that sucks. What is worse than that is a war that destroys half, if not all, of the continent. Because to Track, mm. the last time that this weapon was found, the orcs almost defeated the Alsar dwarves. Um... Mm -hmm. Which is bad. And, and the best part about it is I don't think people realize how bad it is. Where it's like, in Trax's mind, the orcs leave the Alistar Mountains, like, the continent dies. Like, there is just too many of them that are trained war creatures, like, wiping their way across a land, no holds barred on who, they, who or what gets in their way. Like, that, that's just... It's just the end of the world, basically, in Drax's mind. Now, he isn't sure if it would be the the last time it happens. Because, like, in, in Drax's mind, his religion says that the, like, spirits of their gods will reincarnate um, into the Tanar of, of his people. And, like, those specific people will unite the tribes and storm the land. If that doesn't happen then it's not the end of the world, but it still probably does mean that half half the continent dies in Track's mind. It's like, it may not be the last time, but it is really bad. Um, and that's a bit bigger than, like, one to two people's deaths. Yeah. Like, his well, goal Trax right is, now is to stop the end of the world in his mind. Yeah, Track's a very, like, prioritized person. Like, yes. Like, yeah, there'll be time to mourn, but let's make sure, like, there's a place for us to mourn mm -hmm. as well, you know, that we're not all dead after, before we can mourn. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty great. I had something I was going to say. Oh, no. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's... Tracks. Tracks a bit preoccupied with things that he knows, which I kind of love. I kind of love that, like... I both love and hate it. I've mentioned before that, like, sometimes I'm kind of bummed that more people aren't afraid of Track. Like, I can pretty much walk into any town, and they're like, oh, that's an orc, that's surprising. But it isn't, like, a yeah. visceral fear reaction. Well, that is my that is my fault, because when we initially started the campaign, that was the goal. Mm -hmm. And then I got lazy. Happens. <laughs> totally happens. <laughs> and half um, the time I just forget. Like, I'm just like, oh, yeah, you guys walk into yeah. town. I'm not even thinking about, oh, crap, like, there's... There's a, you know, this, like, this eight-foot-tall monster, monster. yeah. Because, you know, um, obviously, I know Tarak, and not that he's not just an orc, yep. he's Tarak, and everything like that. So, that... But don't worry, DJ. Me, that was the initial intention. Don't worry, it came up with a reason. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> On Table Scraps, we, I was talking about it. Um, and, and I kind of view it as a lot of people have, like, forgotten the brutality of the orcs, just over time. Mm -hmm. Because, like, they're oh, yeah, locked 100%. away behind this wall. No one ever oh, that's, sees yeah, them. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, yeah. And so it's like, an orc walks in and they're like, oh, an orc, that's strange. But it's yeah. like, there's also the western orcs, who, like, aren't as bad. Um, that are a lot more, like, small time. Um, so... Yeah, and especially where you guys have been traveling. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, free nations, orcs, for sure. Like, the, the free nations... Unless you're in specifically a thing, the northern uh, most free nations, which is the one where all where those Western orcs rely or uh, reside, like most people will ne will go through their entire life without seeing an orc, mm -hmm. um, and so they they have like these these histories and these legends. But then when uh, a relatively small orc yep. walks in with a group of other people and doesn't start causing problems, people are like. That's, again, that's weird, but, like, 
I don't think I have an issue with this because there's no issues here. Yep. So, so yeah. like, and yeah, I and I kind of love it. I I kind of love. I'm. I, it's really growing on me that like, the way I explained it to Lydia was like it would be like trying to explain, like going to the past and trying to warn someone that like a nuclear bomb was going to explode but they mm -hmm. don't know what a nuclear bomb is or yeah. what it does. So you're just like, 100%. this is going to kill like a billion people. And they're like, is it though? Is. Yeah. Like, is it, is it really 100%. gonna, is it, like, it's a bomb. Sure. But like, how, how bad is it? How bad is um, the bomb? Yeah. Cause they've never yeah. seen it. They don't know what it can do. Um, so I kind of love it. It's just track being like, I can't explain this to anyone, but I know that it's bad. Like, unreasonably bad but yeah mm -hmm. so that's been a well the the a fun time the next arc is gonna be very interesting i'm so pumped it's, i'm really excited it's so interesting these are the moments in the campaign that i really look forward to or the moments that i've been planning for like months or a year in advance that I finally get to like <laughs> come to fruition it, these are the moments that make me really happy i want to go to crimson waste so bad i'm so excited <laughs> dude that's gonna be so wild I want yeah. it to just suck so bad. <laughs> just and the I'm, worst. I'm so excited. So, I need to get you a list of, like, flora and fauna. Aaron, I would love... I, if you were to give me, a uh, like, a dummy's guide to the Crimson Wave, I, where, like, you have everything in it, bro, I want I, that. Please. I'm so down. I Dude. literally... I have it in my brain, and I just need it down. Just Specifically, down. like, plants... <laughs> Oh my god, the, yeah, there's no, so many cool right, plants. Right, which is right funny because it's the desert. But, like, <laughs> but I mean, the desert, the desert is filled with, with different types of desert. Yeah, but it water. isn't like the first thing that you think <laughs> of when you're like, oh yes, yeah, a desert. Hmm, plants. Um, which one is? I just flora I, is plants. Uh, yes. Flora is plants. Fauna yes. Fauna is animals. Because um, yeah. fawn is it's like a deer. <laughs> <laughs> And flora that's, is like a flower. Awesome. That's, a terrible analogy. <laughs> that's how I remember um, it. Erin, we talked about this a bit yesterday with Drew, but I really, really, really liked it. Um, I want to talk about it here. Yes, talk about it. Um, was uh, well, I want I want you to do it because you do it oh, much no. better than what, I do. What did I talk about? It was we were all talking about like fate and like it's different implications oh, on like all oh, the characters and oh. then you had all the really good analogies okay. for everybody so so like in the campaign drew at some point in time this is one of my favorite moments between tarak and cather because cather was all like talking about fate and stuff and his main thing was like he described fate as like a person walking through a forest path Right? And there's a whole bunch of paths placed before them. Some of them are, are more difficult than others. Um, some people make their own paths. Some people find paths made by others. Um, in Cather's place, he believed that a path was placed before him, and he is deemed to walk on it. But then Track responded with, like, orcs live in a desert. There are no paths. Um, and I was kind of talking about end goals for characters, because... Like, my favorite kind of ending for Cather is when Cather realizes that he isn't walking on a path, he owns the forest. Like, when, like, he realizes that he isn't set on a path of destiny, it is his ability and designation to decide where destiny takes him and others. Um, and kind of in each of our own situations, I kind of imagine, imagine it as, like, different topographical areas with like track is in a desert like there are no paths but it's rough and it's terrible um cather is in that forest that he owns and he deems where the paths go but like rania's situation is that she has so many paths this is what you said so many paths and you just don't want to take any of them you're like <laughs> i don't want that path and so like i kind of view it as like she is on a mountain and the end goal ends at the top but she doesn't know what's there and so there's, like, someone next to her, and they're like, yo, I can, like, carry you to the top. She's like, I want to carry you to the top. And they're like, oh, well, there's that cave there's that cave system that will, like, lead upward. She's like, I want to go through a cave. 
And then they're like, oh, but, but like, you could, you could, there's this path, this footpath up the mountain. And she's like, I don't want no footpath. And so she just ends up scaling the mountain herself. She's just like, I don't, I don't need any of your paths. Um, and that's kind of like how I view the like good ending of Renaya is just when she's like, no, I, I don't want any path. I'm going to make my own way. And then Edward's, I imagine, and just because it's Edward, his, like, <laughs> form of freedom that. is just a city where it's, like, there isn't a question as to where the path goes. He knows that he's going to 7th and, and like, board again. Like, he knows where the street is. It's just straight down Main Street, take a left. The problem is there's so much traffic that, like, <laughs> getting to the destination takes forever and you have to take side streets and you know where you're going, but it's just the worst thing to get just, there. Traffic's horrible. It's like it's just uh, he's like, oh man. <laughs> and then I did an excellent uh, Edward impression. Impression oh, that will never see the so light good. of day. <laughs> it was so good. It was beautiful. Um, but yeah, like I love that kind of like end goal for each of the characters, like determined by topography. Feels Ooh, that just was so good. that was so cool. I loved that so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, that was, was that. that was my thing that I was talking about. I talk about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for the Crimson Waves. I'm so, I'm so pumped. I'm uh, too. Is there any, any, any things that people would like to say or add to main campaign I had, conversation? I had a, I had a question for DJ Ooh, you always before do. we started. Um, as you were right, the cactuses will all be different colors. Yeah. Purple mm-hmm. cactus, the orange cactus, green cactus, a blue cactus. No, the, the thing is, there can't be any green. There's no green. Ca- it's it's all of the other colors except for green. <laughs> no, there's all the other colors. Yeah, it's like Lydia, it's like your time here. Come on. got like chartreuse. Mm-hmm. Like. Whoa. <laughs> hey, by the way, a little behind the scenes sneak peek. Whoa. So I recently got this brand new boom arm my mic yeah already a thousand times better but lydia is also getting one and it just shipped sweet i will also be getting one but i haven't bought it yet Ow! because i'm waiting for for a paycheck can you not injure yourself on your own like boom arm so there's a (laughs) a, a gap here and i was grabbing it like this where my fingers curled around just a little bit but as you pull down the gap gets smaller and i pinched my fingers i just didn't get it (laughs) oh i know what it is (laughs) god dang dj Okay, it's a real so idiot. Aaron, Drew, and I have all kind of talked already about mm. this. Oh, no. Um, about, like, what we predict as far as the kind of role our characters are going to take now and with, like, this happening, like, how their reactions are going to lead into, like, their actions as we continue forward and things like that. What are your predictions for what each how like each character is going to kind of respond to this going forward so i'm responding to malora and havel and malora and havel and then kiyomura and yeah, like what roles and, and and actions and stuff do you think will change oh that'll be interesting well that will depend on when cather kills renaya that's a very um, solid point. <laughs> Renaya dying changes no, a lot of things. Um, Renaya dying changes everything. Um, How bad would it mess up the campaign? Yeah. Or would it make it easier? I'm kidding off topic. I mean, well, the real question is, what's the likelihood of Tarak, Edward, and Cather staying as a group? I think pretty high. We're good players. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I mean, fair, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, I can come roll. up with a way for Tarak easy. Um, well, that's good. But uh, like I, keep an eye on I don't know about Edward. I'm not Grant. Who killed my friend. I mean, he probably had yeah. a reason. Either that or Renai just kills Cather, and we just drop that plot line completely. Um, Fair. Let's see. The role that, we, that everybody plays. Well, Edward... Nothing really changes for Edward. Edward's growing and maturing quite a bit over the last probably four or five episodes. 
Um, and so I think that would continue to grow. He's probably going to become pretty... I feel like he's going to become pretty, uh, like, introspective. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I think now that two of his friends and his only family and everything like that is, is gone. It's not a confirmation that his mom is dead. I put, he put it in quotes. Oh, so I wasn't, I, I'll be honest, I wasn't looking at you. <laughs> well, thanks. Um... But with all of that, I think it's definitely gonna get the get the cogs turning for him. Um, Tarak is definitely going to continue his role as team counselor. Fair. Um, Cather and Renaya are gonna be really interesting. So Cather and Havel kind of had this interesting dynamic of leadership, where they both they both didn't per se like want to be in charge but they both acted like they were in charge um and so now that Havel's gone I will be curious to see how exactly that plays out with leadership quote unquote of the group and who like you guys have always been pretty uh, democratic with your decisions and stuff like that so I'm not too concerned about it but I definitely think that'll be interesting especially since you guys are now beginning to see like Catholic gods more and, and have a little bit more of an understanding for what he believes and a more, not per se a respect for it, but a acknowledgement of it, I guess. Um, Renaya is... Renaya is a firecracker. Like, blow up at any second. I mean, Renaya will be very interesting, um, especially with some of the things that I know now after talking to you, Lydia. Hee <laughs> hee. Hee 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 hee. To, to Lydia and Andrew, I would love a, like, just an episode where it's just the theology lesson, where it's, like, we split up into groups of three, where, like, it's it's Cather, Renaya, and Poyo, and then the other group of three is me, Edward, and, uh, and Tack, and then it's it's literally just, Takarim is like, Track, your gods aren't real, and Track is like, your gods aren't real, and then Edward's like, I agree, both of your gods are not real. <laughs> and then on the other side of, on the other side of the like room like 30 feet away you have like uh cather who's like i don't like grotz and my gods are great but like i also kind of don't like them and then renaya was like well i hate your gods and i think grotz is great and then poyo just goes <laughs> 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 like and that's the whole episode is us just like talking about like, individual religions. I think it would be, I think like it'd be Tales great. Of Boston say, Absolutely. Like, Tales of say esque episode, and I love it. Oh oh ooh ooh! I have a question for you, DJ. So uh. I know, I know that ginger is an important question. an important factor in this story. Is okay. Ginger still an important, or at least she was? Is she still a like hyper important factor in this story? So, or did you just say like if I kill Ginger, people will riot? So she has to live. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna reveal. Okay? Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's probably never gonna happen. Also, we are, it, we aren't yeah. allowed to talk about this outside of Table Scraps. No one can know what unless they table watch scraps Table ta Scraps. Stays in table scraps. Yes, we're like Vegas, no, but more friendly. Can know. This, this is <laughs> this is insider knowledge since it will probably not ever happen but um, and I'm not going to go too much into Melora's backstory because there's that might still that. come into play <laughs> but with Ginger specifically I mean Melora didn't really even know all the details but Ginger is uh, a fae um She's not like a fae god or anything. No. She's not an arch fae or anything like that. But she's just a fae. Um, and so 
because she's just what what's the term fairy in nature fairy, fairy uh she? i mean yeah fae uh some would call it a another... she like an s-i-d-h-e oh yes that's, that's um right. one, a because member of the of that, she she's very um tricksy and uh and sassy and um resilient and so she can just take a big old beating and she doesn't die because of old age because she's a fae uh, mm-hmm. and so yeah that's that okay the confirmed of it. the squirrel is not a real squirrel the squirrel is not a real squirrel just like poyo is not a real panda oh, poyo! what heartbreak also but my is also not fae. i have mentioned this so many times Period. my favorite thing in the entire game is that track just hates poyo just hates him it and it's so it's sad. so beautiful. But it's so funny. It's so it's good. Such a good little thing. <laughs> like every time Poyo shows up, everyone's like Poyo, and Track is like, "You I... hell beast." Oh, hell beast, fiendish I from the nine. I love, nine. I love Poyo oh, and Tikaram. I also think, guys, you don't understand how much Lydia loves Poyo and Tikaram. She has I come love to me so much, and she's like, "How can I steal Poyo?" I'm, I'm like, like I like want to keep. Can't. We he's, gotta, we gotta adopt Tikaram so we can keep Poyo, and then we also have Tikaram. I mean, first priority is Poyo, then Tikaram. Yeah, but, but they're both in there. It's only yeah. because you like know? without Tikaram, Poyo like kind of ceases to exist. Ew. So, but, that, just like... but like Tikaram's great too, and it's just like I think, and this is compliments to you, DJ. Uh, the timing of Tikaram and kind of the events that have happened. Having to care him has been super, super helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also been, like, he's also, like, you play him really well in the fact of, like, you just play him very mindfully as far as when you insert him and then, mm-hmm. and when he does step in and things like that. And it's just, it's really cool. I like to care him and Poyo a lot. Really good. <laughs> to care him is... So, there's a universal rule that most DMs try and follow, where you're either a DM or you're a player, you can't be both, and so having, like, an NPC that's just there throughout the entire campaign isn't really a thing that you do, because yeah. then you're, you, you're fighting a lot of different things, but Kiyomura and Takara are definitely two, like, characters that I would have played, that I have then thus inserted into, mm-hmm. into the campaign, for longer periods of time, uh, to the point that like I even have art for Takara uh, from Lydia. Yeah, because Lydia's awesome. great. Dropped in the Discord. Uh, go check it out. But yeah, Takara's really really interesting because he's been around for a really really long time, and he's he's not super like charismatic. Where he's not like I wouldn't place him like Uncle Iroh, you know, where Uncle Iroh has like a presence and everybody loves him and he's really charismatic and funny. He's a lot more kind of awkward, but he's like that. He's here's how I would describe Takara. He's the fun uncle who went through a divorce and is now like more quiet, but still has little quips and everything like that. Yeah, uh, he was like a, he was like absolutely crazy back in the day, and then he got a divorce, and and so now he uh, only shows his like really like jovial side like every once in a while, and you're like, oh, that's kind of sad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, where it's like he, he's good in a lot of situations, although it's really funny. So, another inside secret. I have half of a character sheet for Takara. Oh, no. Uh, like, I don't have the stats. I know specifically what his wildfire spells are, uh, but I don't have, like, his spell strength like that. So, when it comes to combat, Takara has been very bad because I just don't know what he can do yet. I, th- uh, I think that's great. I, mean, I think it's awesome. It's awesome. Because, I mean, I think he's only level 5, and you guys are level 7, so, like, you guys are naturally stronger than him, too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, basically, Takarum, my whole goal with Takarum is just to be, like, the awkward dad-slash-uncle who has made it obvious that he is there and willing to be there, but doesn't, like, pursue it. He's like, hey, if you want to get ice cream, I'm willing to go buy you ice cream. But he's not like the dad that's like, hey, we're going to go get ice cream and talk, you know? The vibe, if we're continuing with the, like, um, like, the weird, like, kind of, like, sad uncle uncle. moment, is, is, it kind of reminds me as, like, he shows up to visit for, like, 
so he just happens to be in town and then both the parents are like mm. oh hey john uh super good to see you we actually have a thing could you watch the kids and he's could like you watch the kids? and he's yeah. like i i oh, don't live okay. here and they're like oh but you're uh, so great with them <laughs> and he's like and they're like and it would be a huge help we haven't had any alone time for years and so then they just like leave and he's like so uh hi and they're like so you're our uncle and he's like yes i don't know you technically by law that is correct by all technicality we are related by some strange measure of blood Uh, but yeah so i'm glad and it's been really interesting because i introduced to karim not knowing what what was going to happen with havel and laura was going to happen um and i totally agree with you we're not like we're not Guys, I go by we book. we it, use them interchangeably it so much. <laughs> it really Another does. Secret, Everybody does I it. I do that all the time. Um, but yeah, it's it worked the... out really well because there's a lot of trauma going on in the uh, party yeah. right now. Yeah. And Takarum is like just this random stranger. Well, My favorite thing is that Takarum's known you guys for like four days. Right. Oh, it's so well, good. It's, it's and... so good. He's like. Oh, who are these rabid children? Okay. And we're like, ha! Yeah. And I think I think one of the things I really like about it too, as far as like with Renaya, like Renaya and Takarum's dynamic, is it in a way it feels a lot. It feels a lot like how Renaya and Havel were like really early on. Mm-hmm. Once once like they knew each other weren't these bad people. But minus the um, yelling. <laughs> minus, minus the yelling. The yelling, yeah. That kind of like, like kind of like just acknowledged. Yeah. Take, take care yeah. of each other, kind of thing, and yeah. that's been gone for a really long time. And so then it's mm-hmm. like, I think that's one of the reasons that I think, Renaya loves them so much is because she, it's yeah. it's a taste of that again, and she hasn't had that in a hot minute. Plus, mm-hmm. Pelia is cute. Plus, Pelia is yeah. freaking adorable. Well, I was just gonna say that, and like to Karim partnered with Poyo is such an awesome combination where you have the fun comedic relief of Poyo, but then the very like serious and like down to earth side. It's like yeah, Karim. Pepper and I know his mm-hmm. dad. Like, where, you know, <laughs> Poyo's like, like if you, if, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If, <laughs> like if you if you just need to like de stress and relax for a little bit, you can just like play patty cake with Poyo. But like, Love you, you like, but like if you're too happy you can go to Takarim and then he'll say something yeah. and you're like and he's like, and be like you know we all die yeah, eventually yeah, so in reality yeah. life really doesn't matter and you're like wow oh, that really does bring a stark contrast to the joy that i was Aaron, just experiencing i just had an amazing thought what so i'm concerned you know the character yes for the thing yep the old one yeah i love the thought that him and Takarim are friends Oh, yeah. oh, 100%. Oh, we're best bros. No, no the exactly best the best about. part, DJ, is theoretically he could be watching us right now by that logic. He has, if with gaze of two minds. That's so... He oh could be watching the whole time. He probably is. Probably oh, 100%. He's, he's chilling. Right he has a, he's, he's been he's, looking through Takarim's eyes for the past, like, 30 it's, years. It's like cable TV. Yeah. Like he's like, oh, this is like great. 20, huh. He just switches between, like, 20 people that he knows to see, like, what's going on. This is, yeah. this is the start of reality TV in our in our in our world. So, uh, <laughs> this is a little little behind the scenes. Uh, you won't know what we're talking about for like a for while, but when it but happens, you can refer works. back to this episode and go, "Oh my god, they yeah. were actually planning on something ahead of time." <laughs> little, oh my gosh, guys, you you don't even understand. We have three things in the works right now. A whole three four things. things. Four things. Oh four my god. Four different things. Like That's four, four different... And if you count yeah, the well, amount of things that are just covered by Lydia, it jumps to like 30. <laughs> yeah. True. Well, I can, I can reveal this one. We have a Christmas one shot at the end Neat. by my beautiful brother. <gasps> That's right! That's four! Oh crap, I need and to come up with a have... character for that. And then we have the thing... And then we, we have, have Lydia's thing. thing, and then we have my we have thing. my thing, and then we have your thing. That's four, yeah. So stick around. The paper dungeon is about to be lit. It already is lit, but it's about to be like... It's oh, about no. to we be are, lit. We are upping output. It's going to be great. Because why? You know, <laughs> hey, why not? 
you know <laughs> let's let's do it mm -hmm. um any more any more main campaign stuff oh, that's the only thing. um i'm trying to think if there's any other renaya things i want to well here you guys do that i'm gonna go uh to the back okay you got okay. time so while you Thanks. think of your thing dj takes his thing i'll take this hot ad break hey guys we love you here at the paper dungeon um if you want more content from us we've got it you can check us out on youtube on spotify on podbean like a billion a billion things like we've got so many things youtube check out youtube shorts tiktok we've got a tiktok and things are happening lydia runs it and it's really good um we also have a whole bunch of side content that is going to taper off very quickly but it will be back eventually <laughs> um with uh like that is an excellent idea maz that is a thing that I, I definitely consider and a thing that I would like to do at minimum um, as a kind of a, a blog on our website. Because we have a website where we also sell stuff. Speaking of selling stuff, our oh wonderful gosh, Lydia Corin, or K, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Lydia Corn, uh, has a store, uh, which I think is is at Lydia Store. Aha! Buy her stuff. It's really good. <laughs> yes. I love that idea. That would be so fun. Aaron, do you want to do like a little workshop with me? I you? would love to do DM boot camp where we advise Bro. people on how to do stuff that we don't know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, I think the thing that makes DMing so intimidating to people is that they think that everybody people know what's happening and no <laughs> like everybody does it the same but everybody does it differently and nobody knows what's going on oh 100 percent. the number one the number one thing that dms think is the case is that people actually know how to dm there isn't a way it's, i will say this it's there it is a formless be like water my friends <laughs> like there is no there way there are a couple tips and tricks and hacks Oh, 100 percent. My biggest one that I have discovered is that getting a notebook, actually getting like three notebooks of grid paper. Oh, grid paper is beautiful. Is the best thing that you can do. I have, so I have one for sessions. I have one for campaign planning, and then I have one for random stuff. Uh, and you just keep those on you at all times. Write down ideas. You, you plan out the whole big plot and then none of it happens and you make it up as you go and life is good but yeah we, yeah. we have more into that later and even then i would honestly really love to do it's that. also crazy because i know lydia when it comes to like notes for you you're a big online note person yeah i can't stand online notes i have like 12 of those yes i am i am a well, i'm a very tactile person oh 100 percent. i am a i will suggest paper and pencil to literally anyone at any point in time because something about it is just well and i'm just really good like i'm really i have Lydia's a much easier time phone. organizing with it online like dj's complimented my organizing oh, oh my gosh that's great stuff, so. that's just a thing that i can't teach <laughs> I, I don't even i no i can't do it i'm not that, strong enough that is one thing that i would argue is the beauty of this time period that we're in is that for me I use obviously pen and paper for the vast majority of it, but then I also have, you know, 40 documents of, or 40 pages of, of documents on my computer of written up lore of things that we've written down stuff like that. The only issue is that I'm like half between both. So I have like six notebooks of lore, lore over here and then I have like 12 pages of lore over yeah, here. Yeah, the problem is like making sure that they're are. in the same, in the <laughs> yeah, same location, exactly. yeah. So, so if you're gonna do one commit to the one so i have a, I have a question for you dj as a fellow yeah. paper and pencil uh connoisseur uh -huh. hardback or paperback when it comes to your notebooks um for my notebooks paperback because uh i'll break hardback notebooks mm. um and and i don't know i just like the i don't know i i prefer paperback uh, if you guys want to spend a little bit of money here this is something that I started with that I have since gone away from, but this, let's see, what is it specifically? Uh, yeah, it's, it's Tull, T-U-L. Um, you can't really see it, but it, they're sold at like uh, home or office depot and stuff like that. But the cool thing about them is the pages 
you can remove the pages and move them around and so it mm -hmm. makes it so that like my biggest paralysis with pen and paper like lore building is that I'm writing things down and then I have a thought that should be up here in my notes but now which has is to why I love digital notes. yeah so this is a way where if you're not going to go digital you can still do this um it can be like a little bit hard to open sometimes which is my or biggest just a binder yep. or just a regular old a binder. binder I mean I remember is, when you first left way. for like maybe before you left for Idaho I like got a Ryan. a yeah oh yeah it was Ryan I got like just a thick three ring binder and like filled it with like a whole bunch of di like there was graph paper lined paper like paper separators like mm -hmm. locations for like different things and it was like yeah, I honestly like, I should have made it for myself but it was like, like 30 bucks it was like 15 like get those get yeah. that nonsense on sale after the school stuff and you are mm -hmm. good to go but I am a I will always recommend I am a lover of hardcover notebooks and I only own one and it is this oh, yeah. one and it's gross and disgusting but I will be getting another one in which case I will probably purchase more from the wonderful Lydia Corrin store where she sells not <laughs> only just like hardcover but also soft cover notebooks for you to write all your stuff in buy them the designs are really cool um you know I love I love hardcover notebooks because they, they like if you put them on a shelf they fit so nice and they don't like bend and you can just like that right up there oh. <laughs> oh beautiful honestly that's a fair point because we're getting we're getting really intimate okay you guys can see i have right you just kind of stack them up there i love when dj goes into vlog eight, mode eight notebooks yeah this needs to be a thing uh, that then, happens more oh, and then over here i have one two three four five six more notebooks on top of a, pa a stack of papers but uh yeah so that honestly could be a good thing for me is is having hardback notebooks they just feel so right they just feel so good <laughs> like Maybe i'll have to make an adjustment see the issue is well the other issue is that grid paper notebooks are so hard to get a hold of it's ridiculous so, if you want to go to a store to get grid paper right notebooks there. the only ones the only stores that i know of at least where i live that still have actual grid paper notebooks is Office Depot, and they sell them for like fifteen bucks. Target like aisle a eighteen. They don't have them at Target. I oh, think. you need to get it. You need a better Target. I, as a Target <laughs> I mean, representative, like, know the way. I, I have like seven. I have access to like five Targets. I, but, I'll, I'll be right back. Hold on. I just okay, but I just talk amongst yourselves. Amazon. Stall for time. The the host is leaving. <laughs> I, mean, I I just ditched the campaign. I just ditched you guys and let you talk all the time. So it's great. Um, but let's see, Matt has had a, a comment that I was, uh, that being like, kind of, let's see, what is exactly what you say? I returned. You don't have to stall for time anymore. Great. So, artificial designs for Lydia, by artificial merch. Oh, there you go. Artificial merch. Yes, did you? I responded. Yep. Oh. And don't worry. <laughs> you know, she was going to do it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so a while ago, I do that often. A while ago, a while ago, uh, I was go I I was prepping to run a D and D campaign. It never went through because a bunch of the people like moved states. Uh, it wasn't DJ and Ryan. It was a different group of people. Um, I know everyone I know just left. I'm just all alone. Um, but I had prepped. June. Hey. I had prepped adventure notebooks that were, were like a guide to the world and i never completed mm. them i was working on yeah. it in idaho um so all i did is i is i got these nice like hardcover moleskin notebooks um mm -hmm. that are just like they're just blank pages this is a sick map that dj drew for me of the like location and then I, they were just DJ, like, your maps are so cool. I don't get it. They were just like day by day journals of someone who went through the location. I, and then there was like, I remember this. this art was a, such... of things that he saw on the way that this were like locations that the idea. players could find like in their journey. And I never finished it. There was like flora and fauna of like things that he saw. 
Um, and it was like it was just a real bummer that I never finished it. This was. Um, I remember you telling me about this because this was a really sick idea. Oh, it has uh, the best I, world concept I've ever, I've ever seen. It like go, in camp, terms of the like planes. Ooh. Bro, I would I would I would love to if if anything, and I've mentioned before. On table scraps, I want to, like, play through worlds that either we never got to or, mm -hmm. like, ended too soon or that we yeah. just haven't revisited in a long time. And I would love to do one in this world. And you know it would be so fun? Yeah. We we need to play, like, a, like a two-episode, four-part, whatever, little side series where it's just uh, Maggie and Nicola. Oh, the bro. Way. I would Dog. love it. It would be terrible. Um, <laughs> but another notebook that I got that is also mostly going to get... I'll get to your thing real quick, Lydia, is you can't find grid, but you can find... It's really hard to tell, but it's just dotted. So it, like, functions mm -hmm. as grid. Yeah, um, but it doesn't have the line. Yeah, but it doesn't have the line. So I use it for... I still use it for, like, rough area maps and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Now, mind you, moleskin nice. notebooks are expensive, but quality yeah. yeah uh maz to uh to answer your question about uh drawing a map drawing tutorial really simple okay here's what you're gonna do you're gonna do two things okay you're gonna look up how to draw fantasy maps on youtube okay and i think there's a guy i think his name is like uh it's like dsaw it's like the like the the up down left right arrows but oh, with yeah. like the letters wazd 20 i think is what is what his name is or something like that but he has like five or six little tutorials that will start you out with the uh with like the basics of it and then what you'll do yeah i think it is was i think it's was 20 i think is what that makes name sense is. um shout out to that guy um but unless he's done something like super like terrible <laughs> like unless, unless he's like a mass terrible. murderer and we just don't know i haven't watched a video of his in like two three years yeah, but last I knew, he was just fine. Um, and I think he does, like, dice content and D&D content now, too. Anyway, Makes sense. But uh, look that up. And then look up Misty B uh, on Instagram because she is my aspirations and goals and everything I've ever wanted in life when it comes to maps. Her maps are the most beautiful things on the planet. They are literal, like, pieces of art. Uh, and so I just, I just I take the basic skills that I have learned and then I try to use my knowledge of those skills to mimic some of the styles and stuff that she does. And in general, it works out. I would I'm love... I'm currently learning how to use Krita, which is a program that Lydia has <sighs> led me on to. And I hate it. <laughs> I love Krita, so, dude. So that will be interesting in the future. Um, so I would love as, like, some kind of additional content. So not we've talked Krita, about... Not that Krita is a bad program. I'm just a bad, bad learner. Oh, I it's, mean, it's It's rough, overwhelming. Dude. It's overwhelming when but you first look at it, yeah. Bro, I just gave up. When it came to Krita, I was like, mm, nice, neat, pen button. That's all I use. <laughs> so I've officially, well, I've graduated I've, I've, to using honestly, the, like, spray can. That's as far as I go with ooh. my knowledge of Krita. I, I originally, I thought I was going to be better at it because when I was in high school. Yeah, um, you were, like, the guy. I took four years of drafting um, for, like, mechanical drafting. And so, like, I'm very much used to, like, 3d programs and stuff like that and i was very very good at them but going from like a 3d program that works in the way that my mind works where i'm like i'm using stencils and squares and lines and rulers and all this type of stuff to a more of a like an art design program where it's a lot more free form it's more about your skills and abilities and less about relying on the program that's that's where my struggle has been so I we have really have the tracks. like the trinity of like program stuff because i am i'm way better on paper than i am digital lydia is like way better on digital than like i, I mean to be fair i bet your paper and pencil skills are also crazy i've just <laughs> never seen them so i just imagine you as oh, a yeah. as a digital no. artist and if you draw on paper and pencil it'll break my heart because then i'll realize how bad i actually am <laughs> um and then you have dj who's like yes art is not my specialty but the angles Mm, delicious. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would I love. Dabble. Okay, I dabble. Could you imagine a paper dungeon like Bob Ross section, where Dude. it's just like, 
an individual it's just like it's just an episode that's like pre-recorded of dj like today we're going to draw a map and then it's just like super calm it's just him like just a top-down view of his hand as he papered pencil draws a map or like me being like hey today we're going to draw some character art of something on paper and pencil and then like or a different one is like hey sup i'm lydia today we're going to do this thing yes but the battle music is playing the whole time it's like it's very strenuous but we're entirely relaxed like the lights are ominous and and like there's flashing like 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 uh lights in the background and like a siren I mean... well i really 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 want to do some kind of art stream oh with goodness, you so aaron bad. here on table Scraps. so you can make me look like a fool no, because I want to do it with you. Because we draw, we we draw simultaneously all the time on Zoom calls, but we never see what each other are wor- is working on. We just like, what are you drawing? And a lot of the time, Aaron's response is, I don't know. That's because and... I don't. I really don't. And most of the time, it doesn't amount to anything. <laughs> and then Aaron will ask me, so and then fun. I'll get insecure and be really vague about what I'm doing. Yeah, I always assume that you just uh, are keeping it a secret until you reveal it, and you and you like rip away the curtain and everyone's like oh my god you don't let us see the like part where it's like not perfect i shared it i shared it with uh well it's it's less it's like i get nervous because comments throw me off real easy so if like if there's some kind of comment said about the art my brain will just focus on that comment and then that'll be what I have to focus on in the art thing. So I, I, I'd like to keep it vague and like not get any input on it until I'm, I've got the image in my brain out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, Very fair. Well, there's no yeah, point in taking it's... criticism until you have something to critique, you know? Right. Yeah. And it's what, it's uh, the TikTok Gabi I shared with you, DJ. No one's allowed to look at me while I'm making Be art. I'm making art. <laughs> 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 anyway, Aaron, I'll send you that TikTok. <laughs> I'm concerned and scared. Yeah, I, I would love. I, I would. I don't even know if it would be like, we could do it as like a supplement to, like, table scraps and like have it be like sometimes table scraps, is like an art stream or stuff like. That. And that was kind of always the plan where it's like if I don't mm-hmm. get anyone else, mm-hmm. it might just be me streaming, like me with the sketch pad, doing mm-hmm. art. The problem is I'm real bad. <laughs> I'm like I'm not good at art. Uh, I'm I'm just a it's lousy all cheat. Good. Um, so no, see, but yeah, I, I hate would it love when to... you say that, Aaron. Like, Aaron has a philosophy <laughs> where if he looks at other artists for inspiration and tries to mimic what they're doing, he thinks that he's a cheater. That's the problem. Is that's that it's, literally it's the, not... all that everybody does. It isn't using an art for reference. It's that I can just trace it without tracing it. But. <laughs> but at the same time you're then you like trace it but then you change it to make it yours sometimes but sometimes my brain just tran- like so for those of you who who have never heard me talk about art would make which may be everyone i have a very strange skill in that i can almost one for one copy a thing that i see with its exact dimensions to a different format so like if i see a picture in front of me i can copy the lines without a stencil um so that it looks exactly the same the first time i learned how to do like i figured out i could do this i drew the cover of a magic school bus book um like line for line and like you could put the picture on the cover of the magic school bus and there would be like almost no difference as to where the lines were and i didn't trace it i just drew it from like point of view which for me is like real scummy. So like I don't, I obviously, I don't just copy the things um, because that would be plagiarism and really bad. But like I will take the exact outline of something else and then the outline of something else and, and like combine multiple things. So I'll take like a nose from one piece of art that I've seen and shift it over here and the eyes from a different piece that I think will fit and put it over there. But none of them are like from my own knowledge. Well, and and the thing is, like, like we can go so, on and on and on. So about you use reference art. I, but yeah, but my thing is like, it is really crazy gross. to me how different it is for like stuff you do versus stuff I do. Oh, it's wild. Because like, 
like with references, like I do a similar thing, but I have to use reference photos. And then I go in Photoshop and I kind of Photoshop my own reference photo. Um, I can't use pictures. I can't use real life. You imagery. can't, you can't use real life image. And that's, and, it's and like, that's I the real difference for me. I can't do, I can't use other people's art. Cause actually cause of a similar problem is because I can't, I can't look at like other people's art as references a lot of the time mm -hmm. because then I end up copying their style kind of thing. Exactly. And that's, that's why it makes me feel bad. Cause like if, it, if I was just using a reference photo, like a picture that someone had taken of like a person as like the reference that isn't like copying because the it's a three-dimensional object in picture form but it feels like i i'm just stealing what someone else made for like my own stuff and it always feels really bad and like i know that it's to me it's a very fine line because it's like it's halfway in between like if i did the exact same thing that i did but all i did was overlay an image and like draw it out then that would be plagiarism mm-hmm but it's the same thing, except I don't have a stencil. It's just with my own brain. And that is like, well, technically, you didn't copy it. Because it's not like it's perfect. But it still feels like cheating. Hmm. And I, I don't know, stand by that. It, like, emotionally, <laughs> it feels like cheating. Because I'm like, I didn't draw this. Someone else did, and then I just stole it. So anytime Very you look at my art, you should be like, Aaron's a bad artist. <laughs> it's terrible, and I hate it. Because I'm a scumbag Don't human being. Do that. Um, no. But we've talked about art for a long time. We'll, we'll we figure out. other creators. Unless they're stealing art. <laughs> Don't steal art. Don't but steal it is art. Okay to use references um, and even tracing when you're learning is epic. I do agree with that. Don't yes. steal art. Don't steal art, but. Don't steal art. <laughs> learning how to draw by like tracing other people's art is a good way to learn. Um, but just don't be like yes this is mine now um because that's not only morally wrong but it's also illegal um but we've talked about art for a long time <laughs> talk about art Which we'll we'll talk more insane. separately about doing like art streams and stuff because i know i'm down as much as i hate it and lydia's down who knows i might be able to con drew and grant into doing something similar maybe not like physical art although i know that drew is kind of interested in that but like they might do like a music thing where they show how to like make songs and like the programs and stuff that they use to like modify it would be really cool to have like one week where like grant like composes a song and then another week where drew modifies that song and like or highs and lows it, it and eqs it yeah. and stuff to have like a finished product by the mm -hmm. end super super cool We'll that talk about that. With, like that's honestly probably super, a thing that we'll do. I think it'd also be super fun. I think it'd also be super fun yeah. to just like drop Grant in a seat with like a little mini and a little oh, paint oh. and see what he does. Bro, <laughs> like, hey, hey, just Grant, go, come over here. Just sit down and just start and the camera see, like, rolling. Where it goes. And and he's like, "What is this video about?" And we're like, "Ooh, whatever." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love it. You're, you're gonna talk and paint. Just get talk and paint. Whatever you want. Um, but on to, on to the next topic. Episode four of Between the Rows Between streamed the Rose. this past Wednesday. Uh, some of you may have watched it. Dude. I know that Lydia and I watched it. I, I, DJ, you were in chat, right? He was there for the first part, but he's been sick. I was there so. for the first little bit, but I, I wasn't really sick for the majority of it because I was sick. I forget. Uh, I say as I continue to die. Because I know finale is this Wednesday. Um, <laughs> and nothing bad ever happens to any of the characters. Nothing bad so ever worry. happens in Between the Rows. Nope. Between the Rows is always, it's a happy fun time where everyone has fun and no have, one Sunshine, rainbows, sad. lollipops, and sparkles. Yep. Have, have we talked about on stream how Between the Rows has just become a competition to see which of us can hurt the others the best? Oh, I don't think so, but it, that definitely is. It's, it's, it's not it's me. A, that's what it is. Yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. sometime yeah, in the, the show, <laughs> someone is just like, I'm going to make someone cry today. And that's like <laughs> the goal of the player. It's, and it's beautiful. It's so funny because it really is like we, we come to B BTR and we're like, so... How much trauma can we cause like, our hmm. fellow players? How much can I this? hurt you? <laughs> I really want to just. I just want to see. And it's just between the rows. Like, 
just and it's just between the rows and like all of our other stuff like for the, i shouldn't say that all the time we're not trying to hurt each other but like the vast majority of the time it's not like uh aggressive in nature but when it comes to between the rows like something different comes. oh it's there, a free for all with Grant, Grant becomes Grant is one of the nicest people on the planet. So oh, when it 100%. Comes between the rows, Dude. he will sacrifice everything to make Lydia cry. This this guy is Stop like freaking the conversations we've had, like just getting ready for between the rows, how dark he will go. Oh my god. It's like god. It's and and you also have Grant. to remember, so original Between the Rows was, like, basically me and Grant just sat in a car and talked about things, and it was hilarious, because basically every single week he would get in and he's like, so I thought about this really terrible thing that we could do. <laughs> like, that's how it started, where it was just like, yo, what would happen if, like, so-and-so died, or, like, like how, how great would it be if you just, like, ruined this thing that someone loves like how how unsatisfying would that how it just be great and he he <laughs> always like like with um with this between the rows in particular he would like message me he'd be like is this too much like like <laughs> i was his i was his scale 100 um, okay i want to do this this and this but is it too much <laughs> god so funny grant is such a little freak which is interesting because with this between the rows like i I feel like Benedict hasn't been all that bad so far. Oh yeah, no. So honestly, one of my favorite things about this this season, there's a lot of things. I this is my own personal thing. I think that this season, in terms of like my work, like the 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 work that I put into it, is better than the original season. I think that the um the like content overall is probably more entertaining in the first season of between the rows not because of anything that you guys are doing just because of the like situation that you guys are put in the format is different you guys have less time even than we did last mm -hmm. year because like mm -hmm. we're one episode less um and like there's a lot less mm -hmm. things to interact with in in this season um mm -hmm. it's pretty much this is the closest thing to like a dungeon crawl that we've like really had yeah. Like, right. even on, yeah. like, the entirety of the Paper Dungeon. Um, like, this is pretty hardcore dungeon crawl. Um, and it's, they're only two hours long. So it's, like, mm -hmm. like it's really, this... To... Yeah. Like, episode it's four hard, was it... probably... I keep interrupting you, sorry. Episode four well, is probably I, the I most... <laughs> <laughs> probably the most, like, character interaction time that you guys have had. That's what like, I Yes. Yeah. 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 Um... And so it's just it's it's just a different feeling. But one of my favorite things about it is how many things are never like that. Like honestly, unless we decide to tell people, they'll never know. Mm -hmm. And and a lot of that will be like some of it has already been hinted hinted at. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more of it will be hinted at in the finale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like, it's never resolved. Like it just ends. Mm -hmm. And no one ever learns right. these things that's about true. the characters. I, and I think that's that just wonderful. That is one thing. Uh, I, I'll have to talk about it next week on, on Table Scraps. Yeah. That oh, does, is that a confirmation you'll be back for next week, Table Scraps? I might be backpacking. I don't know. So, we'll see. Ah. Sorry. I have time. Ah. So, I might I might go enjoy the outdoors. Ah. Oh. This has been very, very fun. I've been very much enjoying this. So maybe, we don't yeah, do maybe outdoors here. We're just sad. Outdoors, but... what's that? Yeah, never been. Um, Pace is at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm literally in a basement right now. I'm not even going to lie. There's like two, two tiny little windows. I'm in a prison. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I mean, I really enjoyed... We are, we are actually done recording all the things. If we weren't, it would be very concerning because we have to stream it next Wednesday. Right. Um, so like... I'm pumped. Uh, I, I had a, I had an absolute blast this year, just like putting mm -hmm. things together, and and I love one of my favorite. Things, and I do it in the main campaign. I do it when we do, uh, like, like actual Dungeons and Dragons on table scraps. I love foreshadowing. If I could just foreshadow forever, but never actually reach the conclusion of the foreshadowing, that is my ideal game. Like that is just my favorite thing You're in the so world. Good at it too. I I love it because I have like, 
what I want is that, like, once we finish the main campaign and we had, like, several side campaigns, I want to be able to, like, make a compilation of me saying things in the main campaign, in side campaigns, and on table scraps that are all linked together to show, like, an end goal or, like, oh, yo, this is referencing this thing that happened in this campaign. And like, also, I want to be able to take the part of this episode where DJ's like, you know, the old one? Like, he could be watching. And the then, thing with, God, I want between so the bad. rows, though, between the rows, though, what I love with Between the Rows is you don't know if it's foreshadowing or if it's irony. Yeah. Like, it can and go so, either way. And sometimes it's both. <laughs> sometimes. And sometimes it's both. Like, there was a moment, there's a moment in the finale that afterwards I was literally like, oh no, this is this is both foreshadowing and referencing. Um, like, this is referencing past and the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I've told them a couple of times, I can, I can actually tell you guys the, because uh, like, this isn't a thing that is, is mentioned, but I can totally tell you. The, uh, the prophecy at the start of this, mm-hmm. it was told that it, it wasn't a complete prophecy because it wasn't a, mm-hmm. a f- finished seance. Right. So like there is a there is a non-zero in fact very high chance that in some future season of between the rows you hear the full prophecy and whoever's character or whoever and they're not gonna playing know. is gonna interrupt the ghost that says it yes it's gonna be great um <laughs> but yeah that's that's like so perfect is is I love it because like. I think of it kind of like a horror movie where like something happens in a horror movie and then like, or, or like the Terminator movies where like someone holds up like the like metal piece and they're like, Oh my God. And you're like, Oh, that's, that's from like the original Terminator or something like that. Yeah. Um, I love references and foreshadowing like that. And I just want to do it all oh, the time. It's pretty great. I want it so bad all the time. That's good so things. Good. It's so good. It's so good. It's um, so good. And we are doing um, after the finale happens, we're gonna do a kind of sit down and talk about it. Yeah. So some things might be revealed, but others might not. <laughs> so be there, be square. Be there, be uh, square, or a triangle. Triangles, pretty cool. triangles are strong. Um, triangles. A lot of symbolism in triangles. A lot of symbols so much symbols. So, so many symbols. Uh, it's actually yeah. the strongest shape. Yeah. I thought cir- circles were the strongest. No, it's because the triangle, the weight evenly distributes itself. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I I love I I loved all of the characters. Uh, DJ, it has been, it has been especially wonderful to play with you as a player because like I don't often you. see you as a player, mm-hmm. um, like especially anymore. Like it used to be different, like back in the day. Yeah. But like now you just dm for us and so like it's been so long that i can't tell if you have drastically improved or if i've just forgotten (laughs) that that's always the way that you were i'm gonna say Um, that i have drastically improved because i've been surrounded by some truly amazingly talented people yeah we've forced you (laughs) (laughs) you guys i seriously feel like that like every like two months i'll just text lady i'll be like i'm redoing everything and she'll be like why i'm like because it's not good enough for you guys (laughs) (laughs) Um, so I, I would say I first of all thank you very much that's such a nice compliment uh, and, and second of all I, I blame you guys for me improving because I refuse to be the weak link I at least want to be on par sometimes <laughs> peer pressure isn't always it's bad it's a good thing that's right um, <laughs> peer pressure should be better it's all about yeah, the stuff today. It, it, but yeah it's been it's been a blast playing uh, w- with you DJ it's, it's just uh, it's but you are it's so frustrating because like just for once i'd like you to fail oh. <laughs> like, it's so I, hard I, there, for like you just never blow it last episode where i i i wasn't too i wasn't too too hot you know okay okay so i would now just like you to compare said, there are also a couple times where i really should have just oh not, bro you know, I, I should have just... Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. But, like, if you compare, like, DJ to, like, Mere Drew, like, in terms of, like, success, fail, opportunity moments, it's, like, we're not even on the same... We're not even operating on the same graph. Like, <laughs> DJ is on, like, you a know... pie graph, and we're operating on, like, 
a line graph. It's completely That's... different. I just got That's what thing. cracked me up though with Between the Rows. Like like episodes one through four, Drew like is just rolling horribly the whole time. And then like he's getting frustrated about it. He's voiced that he like just can't roll well and things like that. And yet he is the only one who goes untouched. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. like all the rest of us are like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you guys are like, succeeding. Man, and just my dice like, ah, stink. Ah. And then we're over here like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Um, dice is such an interesting setting. Oh, <laughs> I really love it. I love it's it. It's so cool. You play so differently in Bison than you do in D&D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like in D&D, you're like, I can do whatever I want, and I can handle the consequences of whatever I do. In Bison, you're like, if I step in the wrong spot, my character will literally die. It's, I love it. I love it so much. So this is a big thing that I really want to, that like, I love in games where I play. And I've noticed it's kind of like a developing trend among people that is like a thing that they really don't like is... Um, how much fun it can be to experience failure and death, which is, is a really weird statement. Because, like, I, like, obviously, I love my characters. I love when I play my characters. I love when I DM and my NPCs are there. But, like, there is a... It's something just wonderful to me about, like, the heroes not succeeding. Because, like, if you win all the time and there's no threat, right. to me, it kind of well, makes yeah. the experience, like, less enjoyable. Well, I, I think the biggest thing that comes with just maturity as you play these games more and more and as you kind of grow is creating characters that have weaknesses and fears yeah. and, and that are human, you know, yes. that mm-hmm. aren't these mythical, godlike, Hercules-type characters where, like, they can do all things and, and be all things. And they never are afraid and they never have any struggles or anything like that. Um, you know, I think definitely like the on on the character sheets for D and D they have your uh, like bonds, like, flaws your and or, yeah, stuff your, like uh, that. That's what it is. Like they have that for a reason, it's to encourage you to mm-hmm. make a character that is more well rounded. Um, and with you especially Aaron, and Grant does the same thing. Grant Grant and you guys both do the same thing where you embrace the comedic side of failure. Oh, it's and, so good. Like, and that was something that I, I've heard a couple different people talk about um, when it comes to like DMing and like DM theory is when it comes to critical, when it, when it comes to crits, whether it's a success or a failure, if it's a, uh, uh, if it's a natural 20, make it epic. If it's a mm-hmm. natural one, make it funny. Yep. Uh, and, and I think that's such a good way of, of going about things. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because, like, especially natural ones, like, when you fail on something with a natural one, like, it's logical that, you, like, you're going to fail eventually. Like, no matter how good you are at something, it'll go wrong. But it, isn't, it normally isn't because of your fault. Yeah. Like, if you, like, uh, I'll take the example of, like, a rogue who's, like, a master lock pick. And, like, just, or locksmith. And he's, like, picking a lock. And it's, like, a basic lock. Mm-hmm. Um, and he fails it. Like, with a nat one. Which, I, I understand, like, depending on skill checks and stuff. But, like, like, some people just play with, like, nat ones fail and skill checks as well. Um, it isn't because he suddenly doesn't know how to pick the lock. Like, mm-hmm. it's not like he, he like, right. or, like, he did something wrong and his, and his pick broke or something. It's because it's, like wet and he like slipped like his mm-hmm. footing slipped and he like comedically fell over it's not something like it's not dumb it's just like yeah. oh sometimes hilarious inconveniences occur yeah 100%. and that's it, it's totally okay yeah. um and the the challenge with so it's and this is where this is where the dm workshop would really would really be interesting we we should have like a dming podcast Aaron. bro
our videos. Is my video yeah. freaking out? Yeah. Do I need to? Oh yeah, it it like I'm it restarted the live counter. It might do that again. Fair warning. Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're back. I, well, it might do it again. That's okay. That's um, table scraps. Table scraps. You know, hey, Nothing sometimes good. things happen. Um, yeah, I, it might. I think it's a Streamlabs thing. Because it, it just like it, my screen went black and then it came back on and then it went black and it came back on again. Mm -hmm. So expect expect the stream to crash briefly again, but we should be good after that. Anyway, yeah. Want to show off your, your your tray, Lydia? This is mine. I was, it was a, a gift from uh, Chase Loops, I believe. Got it off my Amazon wish list. Yo. Oh, uh, I have it on pretty metal. It's very pretty. It's so shiny. What's it made out of? Cool. I don't I know, know, but it's, they have this. Is it, like, is it like a soft tray, hard tray? Um, It's like... I'm... Uh, like a velvet inside it's, but hard it's outside like, it's <laughs> okay that it's it's about that amount of hardness <laughs> and then it's felt on the inside yeah yeah, so. yeah. um i use two different dice trays because if i just used one it's really loud you can hear it in the beginning like very early episodes of the paper dungeon because my original dice tray is i just i have this wooden one that's like all eldritchy oh, and stuff, so um, but it's all wood. So like when you roll dice on it, it's really loud. And like I also have gemstone dice, and you're not supposed to like roll them on hard surfaces because they damage the surfaces and the dice. So I eventually just added more eldritch to my repertoire um, with the yellow sign RPG. I also got this sick thing. It just looks like a mouse pad, but the like corners clip together. Like yeah, like Lydia's. Yeah except much less, like, elaborate. Um, and it can also be used as a mouse pad. It's the exact same texture. And then, so I just have that's this one. Pretty awesome. I just have this on the inside, and that's that's where I roll oh, my oh, dice. Okay. Um, so that way it isn't, like, super loud, because my, my dice box is, like, right next to the mic. So I try to keep it a little bit more stealthy. That way it's not, like, every time I roll dice. I am the exact opposite way. I have the loudest form of dice box. You really do. Have with and my, we are all like, aware of it. Dice towers. <laughs> like, we're just going to have a little dice ASMR. Here, we're gonna, we're gonna little, like, by dice ASMR, it, it means that if you have headphones, prepare yourself. Just gonna... That wasn't that bad. Sometimes, uh, I think with the like <laughs> more dice, it's it's better than with the less dice. Or maybe it's because you were like holding it. But sometimes, sometimes DJ, because you're, isn't it like right? It, it was like right next to where your microphone used to be, right? So my microphone used to. It's a vlog time. We're gonna go for it again. Ooh, my favorite part of the stream. Vlog time. Here's my setup. I have two screens here, okay, and then I have a central mount. So my mic used to be like right mm. here, and then my dice tray would be over here a lot of the time, or sometimes it'd be like on the opposite side over here. But it's still, you know, fairly close. Yeah. So, yeah. Because, yeah, I remember, like, when we first started, you were like, mm, time to roll a single D20. And it was like, oh, we're God. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Just then, murdered uh, us. Yeah. Uh, uh, but then I also want to show this. this oh, yeah. This is my favorite the classic. dice tray uh, that I've ever had. I don't use it hardly at all anymore because I have the tower. Um, but back when we were in high school and we played D&D, but we didn't have like a set space that we were always doing mm -hmm. it. And before I had the dice tower, this was really nice because like a little case, put some foam in there, um, and then it would just sit here like this. I would have my dice up in the top half of this. Uh, you know, I would roll here. You could put pens, pencils, stuff like that. Uh, and if you're looking for like a fun little project, I think this was like 15 bucks, maybe like 10 bucks to make. I think it was like I bought the box, which obviously came with the clasp, and then I bought the like trim pieces and the feet for it and the foam and then i had a little bit of stain um, love so dj's review mode he's done it so many times I, i'm a big so this is just saying tpd vlog is possible uh, it's um, down. that'd be pretty cool so uh, i also want to show yeah, off my, i love uh, this but i never get to use it uh speaking of of cool thunder the dragons equipment that we have 
Um, I bought this a little while ago when I had, like, I was, like, going to and from, um, like, D&D games, like, every other day. Oh, um, that was a mode. That was a oh, I mean, there was a point in time where I was, like, involved with, like, seven to eight games a week. Where, like, I was playing D&D multiple different times in a day, DMing yeah. and playing. It was an I exhausting remember, time in my life. I remember when... So the issue with our group was that what ended up happening was we had our big main campaign that finished, and then we kept playing for like another year after that. But our main DM stopped wanting to DM. So Aaron started DMing, and I wanted to start DMing at that point, and Drew wanted to start DMing at that point, and then another one of our friends wanted to start DMing. And, and then the and original Ryan DM wanted to do wanted it to again. Start, yeah. <laughs> and then Ryan's, so we all had different games, and we're just like, okay, Monday we're playing this game, Tuesday was this mm-hmm. game, Wednesday was this game. And then Aaron had a couple of games over at school right and oh yeah so so D D yeah. got like started to get like really popular like in the location that we were and i just kept being referred as the like D D guy who knows how to play the game and so like a bunch of people would like be like hey man i'm starting the Dungeons and dragons game but i don't know what i'm doing would it be okay if like like you stopped on by to like kind of like play and guide the game and make sure that like we're doing everything and i was like oh sure i love D." and so i would like help new players like make characters and new dms figure out like how the crap dming worked and kind of be a guide where when someone said hey i would like to jump and the dm goes i don't know how jumping works i would be able to tell them how jumping works and so i got this this neat little product it's this little thing right here um at the very end of that and then I stopped having all those D and D games, so I never like <laughs> used it. But it is a it is an unrollable. It has a sick art that is from the Vison game. It's the like Grim Ravens, um, and all it oh, is is nice. yeah on the inside it has just a bunch of pockets. So like this holds a bunch of dice. I think I actually I have some dice in here. Ooh, dice. And it can hold up to, like, 300 dice or something like that. It's got a middle pocket for cards and an entire thing on the side here for, like, different sizes of, like, writing utensils. And then it just all, it just wraps up. Bam. And so I can just, I can take my little D&D pouch anywhere I want to go. I have a, I have a D20 terrarium for my dice. It's a good terrarium. It's so cute. Um, and I'm just uh, also wander about the vlog i guarantee you grant would be willing to vlog so bad no doubt in my mind grant would be so into a vlog okay what would be really fun is if we got like every single week was a different cast member (laughs) that was vlogging like one of their days mine would be really boring but (laughs) it would just be a time lapse of you at your computer it would be like 10 minutes it would literally like but you wouldn't know you wouldn't know it was a time lapse because I just don't move. Um, but before we get even farther away from it, <laughs> because we're we're so far away from it, this is it's going back to table like, scraps, you know. Like main campaign. Oh Oof. wow! <laughs> Hit me with that question. Um, I'm ready. Well, it's not really a question, but it was something that we were kind of talking about yesterday, and then we were talking um, when it came up as far as. Uh, combat and like succeeding and failing and things like that um, it just got my brain moving to hold on are we frozen I don't think so we might be this might be the point in time where the the stream did its second flicker possibly I'll keep talking anyway because I'm gonna talk a lot um, but it was us kind of talking about how we have really started to get our footing as far as a team dynamic when it comes to combat like how like how we work together with that and it's really cool is such a good like example of that and it's like like warding bond with Renaya. So then Renaya can like get up there and do hellish rebuke, and then but then Tarak takes the damage from it, and then and then the, 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 Aaron you did, did so much better at explaining it. But it was, it's so, really cool. So DJ, I blew it in the last combat. Well, 
Uh, what's new? I, <laughs> you blew was, it, and a character died. So I was ten feet away. The lore is your fault. I was ten feet away from Cather. <laughs> the lore is your fault. When Cather got crit. <laughs> And at 7th level, uh, yeah, I have yeah, the ability yeah. to absorb damage as a reaction. And I, it wouldn't have changed anything. No, But it would have been so much better from a thematic and tactical standpoint. I could have done so many things with the after of that. Would have made it just a better scene altogether, and I totally forgot and blew it. Um, well, I would have been so happy if you had done that. Because you have, what, 102 HP? I have a total of 109. 109? So I, I, if I was point, at full health... A good chunk of, yeah, if I was at full health, damage. I would have been able to stay standing. But I would have definitely been unconscious uh, if you had, if I had absorbed it. Um, if we, oh, that man. would have been really interesting, because I, like, I dealt 102 damage. Yeah. And so if you absorbed half of it... Cather was already at 40. Oh, I don't absorb it. half of it. I absorb all of it. I oh. take full damage from the attack. I see, I see, I see. Well, that would have been very interesting. That makes me slightly more sad. I would have preferred that you take half of it and then you both pass out. No. No, I would have absorbed all of it and then Cather would have been able to keep fighting, but in vain. And I blew it. I blew it so hard. But yeah, so basically... That fight was interesting. Drew and I were talking... Lady was there. She was at, and she was, she was like, and I got this thing. I was like, oh my god, you have that thing. Um, and in combat, like the group works very well because it, it really is kind of pointless to attack us because it's like so if you like if we're all right next to each other or within a ten foot radius, right? You attack Lydia, and if it's like a real bad attack. You actually don't attack Lydia because Track absorbs the attack. If you do attack Lydia, she takes half damage. The moment you attack Lydia, Cather attacks you. So in reality, <laughs> and then you hit Lydia, and then Lydia hellish rebukes. <laughs> and so it's yeah. literally like, it's literally like no matter who you attack in the party, it's like <laughs> it's just kind of because if you attack Tarak and you just skip the whole process. Of like, mm, who do I attack here? Because the damage is going to go to Tarak anyway. Then Tarak is still fulfilling his mm -hmm. purpose of taking the damage. <laughs> and he still keeps his reaction. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. who do you... The Bro. safest person to attack is Edward. Which is a beautiful... It's true. <laughs> and it's crazy because, like, it's... That whole, like, uh, system is much more balanced now. But when... But could you guys picture... Basically, it happened a couple times, but you guys picture in like two more levels if Melora were there, and you guys had all this them figured out. Bro, like, it would be ridiculous because you guys would have the ultimate shield where I couldn't attack any of you guys, and then Kath or Melora would just show up and deal like a hundred damage each round. I would just and like to state this is why I can throw CR seventeen monsters at you guys and not care. I would just <laughs> like because this is another thing I was talking about. I was like, even in terms of like an arc fay. How much health does an Archfey on average have? Like, if you use, like, the stat blocks of similarity for, um, like, demon princes and stuff. Because there's a lot of Archfey that don't have stat blocks. Most gods don't have stat blocks. Um, but, like, even, like, Lords of the Nine have, like, what, 300 to 400 health? Um, is, yeah. like, a pretty common damage threshold. And, like, yeah, we got... We got thrown around, but I think in total we almost did, like, 200 damage, like, over the course of that combat, and that's with them failing Tarax, uh, or them succeeding Tarax save on the, like, mm -hmm. retribution, um, and, like, Cather missed a couple of hits, Edward went down, um, which means that Renaya wasn't able to, like, really do damage stuff, Tarax never yeah. attacked, like, our damage is still really solid. And so, like, losing the fact that I am pretty sure that Hannah was using dice with at least three natural 20s on them. <laughs> I, I am pretty sure. Because, like... And I'm pretty sure Grant uses ones with at least, like, four ones. Yeah. <laughs> like, Grant took all of the ones from Hannah's dice, and Hannah took all the 20s. Um, so, like, without Hannah... Like our damage goes down, but we're still pretty dang formidable. Oh, oh yeah, hundred well, percent. Like who? And, and I love it. 
And I talked a bit about it um, yesterday with you, Aaron, Mm -hmm. where it's like, um, I'm really, really happy with how Renaya has shifted. Oh, yeah. Because Renaya's, like, first initial thought, like, making her was, yes, she is going to be healer. This is going to be her focus and and things like that. And then... And then we got in, and it was like, and then everybody had a bit of healing they could yep. do, so her healing wasn't, like, optimal. Even though Edward or like, never used his... Even though ever. he never used it, he had it. Um, <laughs> he had the ability, and so I started though. picking up on that, so I adjusted to make her spells more focused on damage dealing and things like that. Like, she always has, she always has healing things for emergencies, mm-hmm. but that's not her main focus anymore. And then... Um, when you add the warlock, it has this whole new element to it. And I'm just having like mm-hmm. an absolute blast. And I'm really happy with, I'm really happy with her place in the party now yeah. with yeah. that. So what I'm looking forward yeah. to is, is the next campaign because you guys have so many options for healing. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like every single one of you guys within mm-hmm. your class can heal. And then you guys are rich, so you always have access to potions and stuff like that. And then you also have Ruat, which gives you three or four free cure wounds per day. We have Uh, never had a healing potion. We have never used a healing potion in this main campaign. You've you've used them a couple times early on before before you guys really start diving into it. Um, Yeah, I think we had a total of like two healing potions from like the witch's hut or something like that. But like, all I'm saying is you guys have so much access to healing (laughs) that it's ridiculous. But I'm just looking forward to the next campaign. I hope <laughs> that by accident, you guys accidentally all pick classes where you can't heal, or maybe there's like one person that can heal, and then you guys obviously won't have Ruat. From what, from you guys won't I have any of this. I, I'm pretty sure and, that is actually what we're ending up on. I'm pretty I know, sure that's the case. Yeah. I know that I can't so, heal. I know I'm that looking, Lydia can't, I can't heal. I'm just looking forward to when I when I throw a jab rock at you guys, and you guys are like, oh crap. It oh, really crap. It, it depends on we what Grant wants, heal. Aaron. So the thing is, we yeah. also don't have a tank. Like, like right now, like, if, if, so I would like to also imagine a world where Tarak isn't in the party. Oh, we're doomed. Yeah, like, seriously. how much easier is it for us to die if you don't oh, have gosh. an extra 100 hit pelts? What did I just hit, say? Hit, hit pelts. <laughs> what? <laughs> hit points. You said, like, hip belts? I'm, yeah, like... a bunch of belts. I'm like a, I'm like a gosh dang disney character um that's so that would be so interesting because like track doesn't do a whole lot of like super noticeable stuff but the fact that it's like i would love a tally of the total amount of damage that like track has present prevented or taken Mm because like like it is it is an aggressive number yeah (laughs) what i I should start doing is i should start keeping track of how many damage how much damage i'm doing to each of the players mm-hmm. like i just have a little tally where i'm like yeah this is 13 to track and whatever to there and then at the end of each at the end of each session we'll be like and here's the or uh, the paper dungeon stats track yeah. took 400 points of damage while lydia took uh 10 points and edward took 15 cather took 40 yeah that's your well, stats for the week <laughs> and and what i really 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 love i i'm really 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 happy we have the warding bond now oh because, yeah i love warding bond dude because it was it was like i would get very frustrated in combat because ultimately it was like dj you knew you couldn't hit me because you were going to kill me yeah like that's where it, what it got to it's like you can't hit her because if you hit her once she's she's dead mm-hmm. and then there's no real like if anybody else goes down nobody's gonna be Wait, alive what we're talking about um, like early, like earlier on, not like very beginning, but like around like yeah. 20, 30 episodes. And this, this is actually Another... probably also Track's fault because Track means that you have to put in such terrible things. Because if you were throwing like normal monsters at if like, if I used regular group, encounter, if I used like regular encounter strategies, to, there would be no threat. Like... Oh, no. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I, I've argued with Drew and Ryan about this. They're like, not every encounter has to be a deadly encounter. No, I'm with you on that I'm one. Like, I'm like, first of all, it doesn't matter if it's a deadly encounter or not. Because if I don't See, make it at least a deadly challenge rating, it's not a challenge at all. 
Well, yeah. Well, and I agree with that. What I really want is we haven't had, we haven't had a lot where it's like this, where it's the solution isn't killing it. Mm. Like a solid point. That's fair. Like that's what, that's what I am really excited for is for Mm -hmm. like encounters that will be, you can't kill this thing, like figure it out. Yeah. There's Um, something you have to do. Like there's something you have to do. Go about this a different way. It's like the, like the, uh, the Varkalac, where it's like mm-hmm. this thing won't die until you like solve a puzzle or something along those lines. Well, not even that, but like, or, or it's like, resolve you... an issue that needs to yeah. be, yeah, uh, like, yeah, like encountered. That I'm That's excited point. for. I'll have, I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, um, yeah, thanks for that, Lydia. <laughs> <laughs> and everything just got harder. Um, but yeah, like. Really gonna flex them riddle boy muscles. Track makes challenges for the party so much harder, but so much easier. It makes challenges for the DM. Yeah, because like if you throw like what we're like level seven, so so throw like a CR like thirteen creature, maybe twelve, and it's like they like their entire turn would deal like a tenth of Track's hit points without healing, and that's like yeah. all that they can do. Um. And so you end up having to throw things that, like, provide a threat to Tarak's health, but a threat to Tarak's health insta-kills Edward. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's just like, well, shoot, I can't attack Edward because mm-hmm. then he'll just die, which was, like, Renaya's case at first, um, where it's like, I can't, it like, who can I really, like, even hitting Cather, like, knocked him out a lot of the times in, like, earlier episodes. Yeah, because it was like Cather's tanky, but he's not like Tarak thick. Um, well, right. yeah, and Tarak is just abnormally. Thick. Oh, like, Tarak is, have... and I don't like it. I didn't want him to be this hard like, to kill. It's... <laughs> um, like, it's so funny because Aaron doesn't roll well except for Tarak's health. Just, just D tens on health. <laughs> like I, it's it's absurd, and I'm like yeah. upset about it, because like I want Tarak to be in danger. Like, I want him to, like, risk death, but, like, he didn't even, he didn't go below, uh, Cather's, he didn't go below Melora's max health. The entirety of that last combat. He still has, like, he has 70 hit points, I'm pretty sure. Well, Um, and that was, that's what cracked me up, is, like, last level, when the worst Tarak got was still better than mm -hmm. Renaya's hit points. (laughs) Absolutely, (laughs) that's like... (laughs) It's like a serious problem, which will be solved now that I remember that I have a reaction that lets me take a whole bunch of damage for free. (laughs) So, as a reminder, DJ, you have to uh, kill me before level 15. Because once I hit level 15, things become a problem. No, 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 no. See, I have said it many, many times. But I enjoy the way that the party has been built. Because low CR creatures, unless you're throwing... Like, I literally had this thought. I was When I was planning out this uh, encounter, I was like, how does this Archfey want to do this? Like, does she want to have a bunch of people going after them? Does she want to have a few people? And I settled on... I saw the Jabberwock, and I was like, okay, I want to throw the Jabberwock. But really good. The, like, and it makes sense, because the Jabberwocks are, like, natural hunters and all this type of stuff. Um, but uh, what I ended up settling on was... Uh, having a, a medium CR creature and a couple of lower CR creatures yep. that ended up with the overall encounter, and I really enjoyed that. I mean, yeah, the the thing that makes uh, encounters dangerous for players, regardless of level, is number. Um, it is so difficult in 5th edition to have one creature that is, like, legitimately threatening, threatening to the party. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially with, like, the way that you guys are now. Because if I oh, want to oh, have oh. a legitimate creature to you, threat to you guys, it has to be above CR 20. Yeah. Mm-hmm. like that, if, if you like want a, actually if you actually get. want to cause a death because like that's what deadly encounter is supposed to be is like you will probably eat i'm pretty sure the book even says you will probably succeed in the encounter but at the like loss of one to two members of the party mm-hmm. but like deadly encounters most, most of the time are actually like most likely one of two you one or two of you will go unconscious which is like yeah. way different than how it's intended especially mm-hmm. with just one creature um like and something oh. that i really want to do is i want to um 
I want to start making death a little bit more consequential. Oh, yeah. Like, you guys can obviously, like, come back from death, but I want there to be, like, things are a little bit different or maybe your stats are changed a little bit, stuff like that, so you don't have a, a Havel situation where he's literally died three or four times, um, but it's totally fine. So that's something I'm, I'm workshopping right now. I'm but excited to see it because I be plan cool. I, I've never had a character die. Ever in my life. We're going to have to change that. And I'm I'm so upset because, <laughs> as I've said, I love, I love, 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 like, that threat and that danger and that loss. Uh-huh. And I never get to have it. And it makes me upset. Because <laughs> I get to watch everyone else have fun dying. And then I just get to live. That's not fair. You guys get to have all the fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but I'm, so yeah, I'm really excited. If, if you don't know DJ and, and everyone else watching, uh, the level seven to 14 are real sketch for Tarak. Cause I get that reaction that lets me take damage for free. But once I hit level 15, I automatically heal a D8 plus my like proficiency bonus or charisma modifier. I can't remember just for free on each of my her on each of my turns up to half health. So like. If you just let me stand there for long enough and, like, you don't attack me, I heal back up to half health. And if you do attack me, then I'm still succeeding. Um, I, I, I like Nilf, Nilf's solution to this whole issue is just to, like, not let Tarak Don't let me, don't like let me hit. Levels. Yep. I'm just in. like, you're just level 7 until the rest of the party's level 10, and then you can start leveling up. And, and the funny part is, I don't, I'm pretty sure I'm still more health than, than have a lit, or than Cather is in three levels. Well, and I just love it with Tarak because it's like he doesn't fight. No, no. He literally no. is just like uh, uh, the whole time, and he's like, like just get just out of the way. The, way. <laughs> the like bad guys like just get out of the way. He's like, no, uh. <laughs> like I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. He's a damage that is goalie. One hundred percent. How that Arkfay felt because she was like, I just want to kill this one person and leave. Like that, I don't care about you guys. I'm just here to kill Melora and leave stop reviving <laughs> stop like, javelin. giving her age javelin javelin heal javelin and then she's like oh, it was stop. terrible she's like i can only stab God. you so many times it's so oh, to, man. to answer our how are you question, still standing get down no. she's like, I, like, I put my sword through you why are you could here? you imagine i thought could i you put a pin in you literally if she would have fully <laughs> impaled cather pulled it out and then Tarak would have just fallen unconscious and tracks and then cather's still standing there she's like <laughs> what is what are you people what is wrong with you and it was such a weird thing because I was like, I can't kill the rest of you yep. guys. So I can't, like, once one of you goes unconscious, I can't hit you again because there's two mm -hmm. death fails right there. So it, it was like, who do I keep? Because, because I'm trying to kill this one person, but I have to get these pests off my back. It was terrible. It was terrible. God, it would have been so it. good. Not, but uh, to answer our question from earlier, the definition of uh, combat encounter difficulties. For an easy encounter, an easy encounter doesn't tax the character's resources or put them in serious peril. They might lose a few hit points, but victory is pretty much guaranteed. For a medium encounter, a medium encounter usually has one or two scary moments for the players, but the characters should emerge victorious with no casualties. One or more of them might need to use healing resources. I love that. They're like, eh, you might need to heal, you know? Hard encounter. A hard encounter could go badly for the adventurers. Weaker characters might get taken out of the fight, and there's a slim chance that one or more characters might die. And then there's a deadly encounter. A deadly encounter should be lethal for one or more characters. Survival often requires good tactics and quick thinking, and the party risks defeat. You That's know, I feel like even hard encounters become deadly encounters for us because going unconscious is very dangerous with our roles. Yeah. It's it, yeah. it's very sweet where it's like <laughs> if if the party is up, like deadly counters are reduced to like medium to hard encounters. If one if if one member of the party other than Edward is down, then suddenly like medium to hard encounters are immediately boosted to deadly because it's like, well shoot. Well, and that's I don't know what to do here. And that's what I really love about like how our combat functions because yeah, ultimately it's like. When we're all up and we're going, you, you we got it down. Unstoppable. Like, 
you can't stop us. Now, if you are able to manage to knock one of us out of place, then we're like, uh oh. <laughs> like, yeah, well, a watch doesn't work if one of the cogs is broken. <laughs> yeah, the best part is that that we have a we have a backup cog, which is Edward, which is just like it just spins <laughs> there uselessly off to the side. And so if it breaks, we're like, it's okay. The watch is still functioning. That The decorative cog is just a little busted up. It's fine. The one on the back of it that's, that's right in front of the glass. Yep. Where it's like, oh, that's pretty. Um, but it's just for the aesthetic. That's Edward. Edward is, is our aesthetic member, where he's the <laughs> one who's like, I just like to be here and be present. And I cause problems and mischief, but nothing that is actually effective I, really, I need to sit down with grant and be like grant show me your spell list and i'm gonna change it all <laughs> Dude, I, honestly i don't think it's even that bad no you're gonna look at a spell string and be like why aren't you using this this, is, why, gonna 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 go, this is a legitimately good spell you got the best ones here why aren't you using it yeah, yeah it's, it's probably better but on the best on, on the best side of edward is that he is officially like an extra 40 hit points so <laughs> it's like hey that's that's use that's like it's not a bad shield edward, it's like 40 temporary edward hp is, is always valued edward <laughs> is just synonymous with expendable yeah <laughs> that, yeah uh, <laughs> um well that, that being said edward's oh man, use him. of bardic inspiration bardic inspiration oh, he's hot He's Absolutely. he's stepping it up as support. You know who never gets bardic inspiration? It's me. <laughs> you know who never needs bardic inspiration because they don't hit things and all they do is take damage? Tobac. <laughs> Sometimes I grapple things. <laughs> Sometimes I do. <laughs> and thank you very much. Yeah, as mentioned by someone. Hold on. I'll find it. A uh, mm, little bit lower down. Wait a second. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Blyph. Uh, yeah, what about that time that I one-shot a monster? Slay. That was amazing. My favorite part of that is just DJ's reaction to it all. It's just like, <laughs> you did. Okay, well. <laughs> and I... you can see my thought process. You can see the college going of like, do I give this creature more health? What what's the point of this encounter? What, is this what was is I the doing? comedy of this better than the storytelling of the of what this creature is? Yeah, okay. I, oh. <laughs> I, love, I still can't believe that you did that. It's dude, it was so good. Cause like by all technicality, the damage difference between Tarak and Cather is like <laughs> one. Like, if we roll max damage, the only difference is that he ha Actually, no, with the gauntlets, we have the same damage modifiers. Mm -hmm. Except for maybe, like, a plus one bonus from, like, his, like, holy sword or whatever. Yeah. So, well, like, my... it isn't that Tarak can't deal damage. It's that I suck at rolling dice and Tarak doesn't attack things. Yeah. My my saddest thing with that whole encounter was that that whole encounter of you guys falling off the bridge and then being uh, harassed by this thing, it was all, all in one. It wasn't like it was two separate encounters because the creature that you were fighting is a demon from Theros called... Yep. Uh, oh, Eater, Eater of, of Hope. Hope. Oh, love him. And it was so good. And the whole point that it worked so perfectly... Because all of you were like, we're going to die. Everything is going wrong. We're going to die. And like, it was feeding him. It was so perfect. And then when he actually showed up and he was going to, like, start doing his thing and being all creepy and, like, destroying the hope, then you're like, nope. And, I was like, well, and that's kind of the – I honestly think that's kind of the best part because the only one who, like, wasn't, like, super hopeless at that moment Tarak, was Tarak. Well, Tarak yeah. And the thing is, Tarak doesn't even really have hope. He's just like, I got a job to do, so I'm like, going to keep is, going unless well, something stops me. Bridge <laughs> fell. <laughs> But like, I'm not trapped. Let's get to business, and then he just You're like goes back right. to work. The, the mistake that I made with that encounter was not pinning down Tarak. Oh, 100 percent. Tarak should have been <laughs> Tarak. Could you imagine the like fear of Tarak drowning? 
like if Tarak and Edward had switched positions. Like, could you imagine if uh, Edward was the one who like makes it out unscathed and he has to save everyone else? Oh man. Oh Missed man. Opportunity. It's that's how I feel about not taking that damage from from Drew. Is like uh, and, God, it was great, but it could have been so different. Yes, and no, you are right. We we do a really good job of, of <laughs> trashing Grant and Edward, but he really does a good job. Of oh, playing he's great. Character. He's so good. Both like, as a character, great. as a player, as oh a God. person, Grant it's, is stellar. Edward like, is great. Absolutely. We love him. It's that just useless so little much fun to make fun of rich him. kid. <laughs> It's just a meme. God. It's like, it's a meme at this point. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it's on the bingo card. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, if it's well, on the bingo card, I have, to, with, I have to go with, with it. it. Yeah, but with Grant, I think Grant fascinates me oh, with great. how much thought he, act, he like, has with Edward. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, everything is, like, almost everything is calculated. And you, like, look at it and you're like, oh, it's Edward. But then he's like, but there's so many different layers to yeah. it. And you're like, whoa. But you, the, the, the thing the, about it, though, is that he never mentions it. He never like, mentions unless, it. Unless you specifically ask him, like, hey, why did you do this? Like, he just does the thing, and then he sits there, and he has a And then he just grand. lets it exist. Yeah, and he's like, I know why I did this. Unless you ask me about it, nobody's ever going to know about it. And then you ask <laughs> him, and you're like, ever believe you. oh, my gosh. This, like, oh, has... he? Edward is literally a croissant or, or an onion. He awesome. has all these layers. A croissant. Um, but he literally Jimmy's says all these Rob. layers that <laughs> Jimmy's Rob. that uh, you would car. literally never know about if you never asked him. Ed- you know, Grant is a freak, but he's our it's, freak. But he's our right. freak. Do you think if I see right. any of you dissing our freak, I mm, so, it, mm, not not chill. Only we get to pick on Grant like that. <gasps> That's right. I have a question for both of you. It's mainly Let's directed see. towards DJ, but I, I wanted to hear funny. Aaron's input too. So, Aaron, so is now. <laughs> how is the party and like just the campaign in general um, different from how you from like when we first started? Like, like what did when we were first starting it? What were your expectations and how are they different? And, like now in in what specifically are you talking about like party dynamics you're talking about overall campaign anything you want well first and foremost the campaign the first 12 episodes of the campaign were not supposed to be there that was your yeah that is my fault and i apologize completely your fault (laughs) that is totally my fault (laughs) now granted i love that that is how it started i i love that little half arc um because I think it set up a lot of things really well, um, and I think it really helped highlight a lot of the personalities of the characters. So that was like the first thing right away. It was like we did your your uh, your one shot, your solo mm-hmm. shot, and mm-hmm. you nearly died. Yeah, so I was like, well, we well, well, what do I do character. now? <laughs> I can't kill her character before she even plays. How funny would that have been? You just kill her and I. You have to make a different character. No, it's just like I'm not even part of the stream. Yeah, no, <laughs> like you show up. We're like, it's like now it's time for Lydia's character introduction, and, and like, I, like none go, of us realize. And, you just, and, like, and you, it literally just pans over. And it's just your corpse, and we're like, yeah. oh. And then it's like, no. oh, anyway, here's Lydia's uh, new character. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it would have been like you guys arrive in Athala, and they're like getting ready to like bury bodies in the public graves and stuff like this, and you just see this like one. High elf. Yeah, and you're like, Lydia, could you please like, describe your character? Oh, yeah, she's the one being dragged uh, into the hole right now. Oh, there she goes. Yep, that was her. Great. All right, so... Not... <laughs> so, anyway, your next character, yeah. So that was something that was very, very different. Um, the, the whole thing with Catherine Melora went basically exactly like how I planned it, which was awesome. That was really great. Rare. Uh, Happens. So it was pretty great. Um... Tarak has been really interesting because I had all these plans on how to hurt Tarak and then they just never happened. Um, Edward, I had no plans with Edward. Well, that's not true. That's not true. Towards the end of the first arc, some of my plans started to come to fruition with some of the family conflict. But he's just so quiet about Edward that I, I never heard that something like his home. Um, <laughs> just the worst. Havel 
had a lot of things that I was not expecting. So yeah, again, with Grotz, Grotz was never something that was planned. I had a whole other arcs that and had It's to be all your done. fault for including those magic items on the table. <laughs> I mean, that is fair. And oh, it was beautiful. Still, I'm just waiting for you guys to end up back in Katyn, and it's like, it's like raised to the ground or something like that, and there's just one little like dragon crown orb that you can pick up, and then that starts the whole another arc. I mean, dude, okay. I am, I, I still firmly <laughs> I was, believe that Tarak's end goal is Dragon King. I was so sad when you guys gave up that orb. That one, I, that was one of the things where I was like, as the NPC, like I have to encourage you giving this up, but I really wish you did it. I'm just saying, I one day I will return to claim my rightful throne. <laughs> um, really track the, the orc is Dragon King. Always, that's right. It always made me sad because uh, Havel. Havel ended up with a couple of the orbs because he ended up with the one with Grotz and the one with the angel. Mm -hmm. And he never appreciated them. Like, he ended up using them and, and saving the day with them and, and different stuff like this. But he was always like, yo, man, like, I want a useful magic item. And I'm like, I literally gave you two nuclear bombs for my campaign. And you're mm -hmm. not satisfied? Like, what do you want okay. from me? Okay, <laughs> okay. So this is the most upsetting to me. Because we don't... I don't think we still have the orb. But didn't we... Do we still have the orb that, like, is oh, the, the, like, binding, binding contract? Yeah. We still have that? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I know what that is. I'm pretty sure. Because I, I know some info about the camp, about the, like, world structure of how, like, what? things work. So we got an orb that we were all like, oh, that's a little skeezy. Because it, it, like, is a binding orbs. contract that, like like forces a person into a role mm -hmm. and i know dj is, is it is it okay if i give my explanation of how gods work or no go for it yeah okay i'm so, so lost wait what? so gods are gods right mm -hmm. they don't die but you can take a god's position the only way that you can take a god's position is if you can basically force them into submission and then they, like, give up. It's basically like an oath situation where, like, you take, like, they relinquish their position. And, and there is there is a specific term for it that I don't remember the name of. And I'm pretty sure it's the name of the orb uh, is the name similar, of yeah. the oath. Um, and it, like, turns a person into a god if the position is available. Yeah. Why do I only, like, remember, why do I remember this like it was a dream? And so, like, we still, like we still have the orb, and we don't know what it does, but I think, like, it's, if, if judging by the comparison of these orbs, it's real strong, and it probably has some celestial or other origin. I don't know what, could, what we could do with it, but if this is like a, like a god oath orb, then we've got some serious thinking to do here god emperor yeah. dragon king track is a possible <laughs> that's a possibility so it's very interesting it to uh to kind of go in on it what does it do dj so well i'm not going to tell you what the <laughs> dang it so you guys have to figure that out in the campaign but going into some of the lore uh you're absolutely right so in the history of the world the gods were not the original creators of the world um, there was one god, uh, Lon Antari, who yeah. created everything, but then she created the Ark Fae as the original caretakers of the world. Um, yeah, that, the world went, went, that went well. I mean, they're beings of chaos. Like, what did you really expect? Uh, but, so, like, the world kind of went into the into its, its what's called the Age of Pandemonium. The world went into its its demon phase, whatever you want to call it. It's, uh, it's gothic high school Yeah, it's like, phase. it's rebellious phase. Yeah. So then, uh, as mentioned in the intro sequence, then the events of the trial took place, which is when Lon and Tari, like, came back and basically hit, like, a reset button on the world. She, like, wiped out the vast majority of everything and kept very few things. Um, but what she did at that point was she then uh, enacted the, the gods, quote-unquote. And so she, um, she picked... How many domains are there? 14, I think. Too many. 12 or 14? Seriously. Uh, but she picked how she picked one prime god uh, for each of the uh, domains. You know, light, life, 
order, peace, all knowledge, that stuff. war. Yeah, all that. Um, and a lot of times they were just people. Like, there's very few of them that were uh, like created for the purpose, or yeah, born there's from two of them Lanantari. that were like actually created to be gods, which are the two children of Lanantari, Saradol and um, and uh, Adaria. Excuse me. So there's those two that were like created for the purpose of being gods, but the rest of them were just powerful people at that point who were then given uh, divinity, and then those prime deities is what they're called were able to give uh, godship and uh, and divinity. That's the word I'm looking for to other people to help kind of balance out the needs and everything like that. Yeah, and so that's why the pantheon is so huge. That's why there's like thirty gods. Because oh my god, each your, order your has so many. pantheon is a pyramid scheme. Basically, <laughs> basically, you can think of it like that. Um, but to go into what Aaron's specifically talking about, uh, there is uh, rules of divinity. There's uh, ten, I think it's ten laws or something like that, um, that go into all of this. Um, it makes it so the, laws, the gods can't fight amongst themselves. There's not one god that become that can become immensely more powerful than the rest of the gods. All this type of stuff. But one of them is that if someone can best you in combat or in whatever, and get you to yield and give up your power, you can transfer your power over to other gods. And it's happened about four times throughout history. Um, and it's, it's it's crazy. So with that oath, it's similar. I'm not going to tell you that. I don't you know, know what it can do. God, but what know? it's very simple. Well, here, I'll tell you this much. You can think of this orb as like the base for the rest of the orbs. Oh my god, we have the master copy? Kind of. Or the reverse of that, where it's like a copy of the master copy? <laughs> More like what it is, it's like this orb is vanilla Minecraft, and the other orbs are modded Minecraft. Mm. Mm. <laughs> See, I don't know how to apply that. Like, if, if, Because no one's attuned to it, right? Like, we were given the option to attune to it, or and then we just didn't? That one didn't require attunement. Oh, shoot. What to do with it? I really want to do it. I'm going to spend all next episode just trying to figure out what this orb does. What that orb do? Well, I, I'm trying to remember who had it. I think Havel might have had it. Or no, 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 no. Tarak has it. Tarak had the... the yeah, I, I, I kept the, the orbs and stuff. And the, the binding one. Yeah, and then Havel had the Icarus and the Grass one. I got orbs for Deus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just... I, I really yeah, want to know, because if if God King Emperor Dragon King Tarak is a possibility, then I want to strive for that. <laughs> no. the, the answer is no. I, but. I, you always say that's the case, DJ. So this is <laughs> this actually leads into I was talking with when I was talking with uh, Drew and Lydia about like kind of how Drew and I both see like the world and stuff. I love stories where you challenge creatures vastly superior to yourself. Like, those are my favorite ones. Um, so, like, when I DM, pretty much any character that you see or creature that you encounter is at some point in time, like, obtainable. Like, that level of strength. I never want to, like, present my players with a challenge that is, like, not overcomable. And that includes the gods. Like... I love the, like, but but a god doth bleed, like, kind of stories. Mm -hmm. And that's how I play my characters. Like, the orcs, and this, this, is, this kind of relates to one of the reasons Tarak, like, acts the way that he does, and the reason that he believes that the orcs should be feared is because in, like, the Orcus religion, it isn't just that the Orcs storm the continent and kill all the people on it. The, the term that is used is anything that draws breath. So, like, Arc Fae, gods, demons, devils. It is, it is believed that the Orcs will wipe out anything with conscious thought. Um, and so they are trained that, like, theoretically, if the end times come while they're alive, they may be the one to slit a god's throat. Which is why Track has never been afraid of, like, where he's been like, yo, if you want me to go beat up Grotz, I'll do it. Like, he yeah, wasn't afraid yeah. of the Arcre. Like, like, that's what he does. Hands of an and he's like, hey, can you yeah. put me down? I've got things mm -hmm. to do. Um, like, he doesn't yeah, fear exactly. power. 
because he knows yeah. like he believes that no matter what the power is it is overcomable that is still one of my favorite moments in the campaign oh it's so good that our fate is holding you and you're just being like hey can you like can you put me down can you put me down so i can go help them yeah, it's like, clearly you're not here to kill us, you're just here to watch us, and it's not any fun if I'm up here, so put me back down, please. That, that Arc Fae, my favorite thing is just throwing Arc Fae into random oh, things, so good. and you guys just kind of, like, skirting around them. Like, oh no. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, there's, here's an Arc Fae, specifically one of, like, Shadow and, like, Ice and Frost and all this type of stuff, who's not good, she's a part of the Winter Court. Wait, you're just gonna let her watch you guys as you go after this other hag and hope that she doesn't do anything. I love that. And and also Trek being like, "Yo, what if I could offer you this this like arc phase position on the council?" Yes, seriously. Where he's like, "How would you do that?" And Trek's like, "I'm an orc," and he's like, "That doesn't answer the question." He's like, "I'm pretty sure it does actually." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, so like, uh, I I will always be. I, I, like, Trek will probably continue to challenge and threaten gods, fey, demons, devils, because he does not <laughs> fear them, and in all honesty, at level 20, I'm pretty sure he could take them. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the crazy thing about it. And that's one of the things I love about this world, is, is that, uh, like, anybody, let's just like what you've been saying, like, anybody can be anybody. It just depends on how far you're willing to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the history of this world is one built on blood so it's just like hey if you're willing to like do what it takes yep. you can become a god it's just how it is it's it's just it's so how funny would it be if like Tarak beat one of the uh, the like gods of death and then became Cather's patron <laughs> like one of the three how funny would that be? That would be very interesting. Where Ka- where Kath is like, hey, I'm going to call out my gods. And then we all show up, but one of them's Track, And he's like, Track, what are you doing here? And he's like, told you I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Kath is like, that that's so not chill, bro. <laughs> that's, so David Dobrik had a vlog where Jason Nash, uh, if, like Jason Nash said, hey, you're never going to get married to David Dobrik. David Dobrik flew to Jason Nash's hometown and proposed to his mom and became his legal stepdad. That's the same vibe. <laughs> what a power play. <laughs> Seriously. He was, he was like, wow, okay. You want to call that? So he then legally married Jason's mom and became his stepdad. That's, wow, what a move. Yeah. Seriously. That's the same thing that... Ke- Absolutely. That it's, like, it's, or, or like go. Havel marrying uh, Edward's mom. Yeah, <laughs> where Edward's like, God, I hate you. And he's like, I can't hate me. I'm your stepdad wait. now. I, I cannot wait until you guys go back to Athala and you're like raiding the city and, and everything is it's going great. And then Edward just goes back to his home and his mom is still there. She's just older and more wrinkly and she's still just drinking wine by herself. Yeah, I hope that she's like legitimately insane. I, I just want the worst possible ending. For, for yeah, Edward's I mom. I don't know what exactly I'm going to be doing. I hope, Edward's because you mentioned, mom. like, and, and and check me if I'm wrong here. Um, you mentioned that, like, it isn't just, like, undead. Like, the city has, like, aberrations and, like, monstrosities in it now. The, the city has, um, outside of the campaign, I compared it to, uh, what was it, Miss Morgul? Mm, in, yeah. In the, in the Lord of the Rings series. Where the city has basically fallen into a uh, into a state of darkness, where evil aligned, not even evil aligned things, but like monstrosities, devils, fiends, basically anything that doesn't want the good of the world, now is finds, like partying uh, a place there. Yeah, uh, which is why like the siege is so important, and it's going to play into the next couple of arcs so much. Um, it's why like I said it to the the cast before but athala the city of athala is really the overarching arc of mm-hmm. the whole campaign um so i'm really excited for you guys to get back there yeah i uh i would love if like edward's mom was just a mind flayer now <laughs> that's that's what i would like and there's this but it's but she's like 
half mind flare, half his mom. Uh, once again, I'm a big body horror guy. So, like, he turns the corner and, like, the one half of her that still maintains her, like, sense of being is like, Edward, dear? And then the other half is like, ah, and is, like, tries to suck out <laughs> his brain. And he's like, no, mother! Um, I, that's what I would like. And then, and then such, like... if Havel was there, he would make a quip where he's like, I can't believe I almost slept with that. And then Edward's like, God, I still hate you. And then, yeah, it would be great. <laughs> what, is, what is it like the uh the like zombie apocalypse tropes where like they like watch their parents turn oh and had to kill oh, them? absolutely yeah. yeah that's this is what i want is i just want edward oh. i just want edward to suffer constantly like no breaks <laughs> and then he gets back and he's like he, we're like yo edward how did it go like is your mom all right he's like no i had to kill her and tracks like chin up buddy i never had a mom and he's like, "What? Well, that's not encouraging." <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, oh, like that doesn't help me. I would love yeah. it. Please make wow. Edward uh, have a worse time. That is my request of you. Edward's a conundrum. Yeah. So simple solution, DJ. If you just make things so bad, he'll eventually break. So he has to like give some form of insight. If you just keep hitting him with like, "Oh, by the way, your mom's dead." Oh, by the way, uh, any relatives that you may have had in the, like, Elvish Forest, uh, those are burned down. Oh, no, by the I, way, I, uh, you lost your leg. Like, <laughs> I'm already doing that to Cather, and that's exhausting. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but that's just because Cather's a wimp. Cather can <laughs> pull himself up by his bootstraps and get back into it, and then he chooses to not... Look, I've got, I've got harsh opinions. Hot takes. Hot oh, yeah. takes. Right? <laughs> I mean, so this is, this is Aaron Clarad. This is what needs to happen. Cather needs to gosh dang get over it all right things happen and it sucks straight up get it together pull yourself up, up by your bootstraps and get going you got don't, don't don't got time to mope and then gosh dang Renaya needs to just make a choice <laughs> just pick a side honey get over there and stay there i don't care what what side it is we just gotta get over there and edward edward just needs to gosh dang do some chin-ups like, bro, get some dirt on the hands. Get to get moving around. You know, I don't no calisthenics. We are doing bar work. All right, we are muscle gaining exercise. We are. There's no cutting. There's no bulking. It is just constant exercise. And I'm not talking about just physical. I'm talking about mental. Guy needs to get it together. Gosh dang, chin up, buddy. That's that's gonna be my take. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> well, oh, wow. So yeah, that was so hot takes. That's that's my advice uh, for you, Lydia, as to how to play your character better. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fair, no, I will allow this. Um, yeah. So, but we've been going for like, like two, two, two and a half hours, something like that. Two, two hours. hours. Two and a half hours. Um, DJ's sick. I've got volleyball to play tonight. <laughs> Lydia's got work to do. So much work. So much work. Back to the grindstone, Lydia. Back to the grind. I was working on it before we got on, going right back to it, yep. Lydia. <laughs> there is no rest for the I'm workhorse of the paper dungeon, Lydia Corn, the starchiest of players. That's true. Lydia Korn. The starchiest of them all. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, if that, does anyone have any, any parting thoughts? Um, Thank no you so questions. much for letting me join. This was extremely You fun. are always really welcome works. on Table Scraps, as is any member of the cast. Um, Lydia, you got anything? The finale between the rows is going to be phenomenal. Um, Only good things the next, happen. The next couple of episodes of the main campaign are going to be interesting. Um, I'm real pumped. Be great. <laughs> um well be uh, on the lookout for like the next year yeah just all, all the stay. fun stuff that we're doing just yep. hang just, out just stay please. um so i will say as was a little bit mentioned by lydia uh check out our additional content um we're gonna be doing it more often uh finale of between the rows streams this wednesday tomorrow Tomorrow, tomorrow not oh, tomorrow dope. no i'm like tomorrow um, monday 
a Monday, we're going to be in a costume. Oh, and yes. Then, and then in between the rows, we're in costume. And then we're doing Halloween table scraps. And I know, Aaron, you and I will be in costume. Yep. Who knows what we'll be doing? Yeah, Who Halloween. Knows? Halloween is this month. We love spooky month. We're going to be dressing up. You do that. So if you <laughs> haven't seen the episodes of Between the Rows 1871 leading up to this Wednesday, they are on our YouTube and on anywhere that has a podcast like Spotify or Podbean. Check them out. They're great. Check out the previous season of Between the Rows, so aptly named just Between the Rows. Yes. Um, our main campaign streams on Monday. If you don't know what's going on, that's okay. You can watch it. The just load of content on YouTube or Spotify as you can <laughs> everything else. Also check out our YouTube shorts, our TikTok, our Instagram, all gosh dang captain by like Lydia and Grant and stuff. Um, other than that, additional things. Um, we will be here next week on thursday assuming everything goes well in the afternoon to either talk or play Dungeons the dragons who knows who will be here it's a surprise every single time i don't think i have anything that we need to particularly say or cover good to me other than that and happy of halloween course, happy halloween good luck and godspeed we will dungeon. see you all next time dungeoneers so long